Hello everyone, welcome back to the next episode of Star Trek Adventurous Cerberus Station. Uh, just a quick announcement that I am planning right now for probably two more episodes, so June 12th and June 26th, and after that we're going to take the summer off while the GM regains some of, of his sanity and the, gives the players more time to come up with new dastardly ideas to and monkey wrenches to throw into my plans. Other than that, nothing else on my front, so let's get to the captain's log. Okie dokie. Uh, you can just blow on a sec. Okay. Captain's log. Stardate 83418.1. After a rescue mission led by Lieutenant Demos, the Exo and their ship, the Elysium, have been brought back near the station to undergo repairs and have been camped outside the Carceri Nebula for about three weeks now. As I've seen some of them on the station, most of my interactions with them have been pleasant, though some have been open about their not wanting to interact with the interlink on the hub. I can't say I blame them for their hesitation, but the interlink has expressed some interest to me about their Omega particle power drives, and I can't say I disagree with their interest. Starfleet Admiralty has decided not to do anything about the Exos technology that drives their ship, which I think gives us a prime opportunity to learn about eh, how to better uh, go about Omega Particles, and even coming up with our own technology to control them. In good news, Lieutenant Commander Keevan has now been promoted to the rank of Commander as of about a week ago, and it seems he's been taking on any new duties rather well. He's made Chief Petty Officer Nia his second-in-command, and it's been an interesting dynamic. I wish them both good luck in their new positions, and I have to share drinks with them separately sometime. End log. All right. Uh, so, there has been much talk about the Elysium, and there hasn't been much in the way of showing it. Uh, th the reason is twofold. One, it was extremely difficult to find a good model. Um, to show, but so this is what the Elysium looks like and the reason it doesn't show up on set pieces and whatnot is the darn thing is stupidly massive uh, in its prime it would have been approximately 20 kilometers has four massive struts each at least as about 10 kilometers in length and is, is the width of a small moon uh that's what it looks like when it first launched. Now it looks as if it has been picked up and scrubbed along the side of a chain link fence over and over and over again. Its starboard side is definitely seen better days. Its front has been uh, forcibly clipped off slightly. But it's now at least seeing better days now that the it's in safe harbor and has seen three weeks of dedicated repair. We're going to do our first meeting. Our first scene is going to be at in the conference lounge on the lower section, which sees Captain Crawford and his senior staff having a dinner of sorts with representatives from the. Why do I have that there? I don't. Yeah, representatives from uh, the Elysium and the Exo. Uh, they're newly now that they're now that they've had enough time to sort out their chain of command. It appears that the individual who has the most seniority is Polomarcos Cavardin, an uh, androgynous individual. Definitely not the same size or bulk as Demos. Shares more in mass with Demos's uh, daughters, uh, Celine and Iris. Galax, the weaponsmith is dwarfs everyone at the table and has decided to forego the use of any chairs primarily because the first time he's tried sitting on a few they never survived uh, apparently rami has confided within a commander keevan that she keeps uh, she makes slight ah, slight modulations to the structural integrity field and the local gravity surrounding him so that he doesn't actually cause structural damage if he jumps too high or too heavy. 
he's also not really built for the station, and stopped bending down to make his way through doors approximately two weeks ago. Wherever he walks, there is now a Galax-sized hole instead of a door. And from nowhere you hear a Tellerite cussing them out. <laughs> yes. Uh, Polymarcos raises a glass of wine and takes a sip. Not in, which is kind of the liquid does vanish, which is weird because he doesn't have a actual mouth. It just sort of seems to filter through a very fine grill, and it turns towards the captain and the commanders, catching Demos in his side eye. I must thank you for your hospitality during our uh, reconstruction period. It has been a tough several years for us and our species, but we finally have ourselves together. And we look forward to figuring out how we fit into this new galaxy. And he raises a glass and speaks a a grand toast invoking names of old of the old gods Demos will raise his cup with him as will I as will I excellent as will I as will the captain <laughs> it is a gesture shared by everyone because otherwise I would look like very bad diplomacy <laughs> ah <laughs> Diplomacy 101. When someone raises a glass, do the same. <laughs> hmm. As he finishes drinking from the from the cup, um, dis which is a fine crystal, and uh, his uh, delicate fingers are managing it quite nicely, he sets it down with nary a chip or a uh, crack. Galax, on the other hand, has what would basically be a... Um, Steel bucket. Yeah, pretty much. Captain, I intend... It is our intent as a society to depart first thing uh, on a, eh, at our next uh, morning cycle. We... Uh, we have... Gra we graciously uh, acknowledge and approve of the invitation sent by your ambassadors of the Federation, but we wish to explore ourselves as a people first before jumping into such a crowded area of space we will set off for our orig our ship's original destination before the accident and once we find ourselves as a people we will be sure to visit yours of course i hope that during the time you've had here you've enjoyed a lot of what our station has had to offer paul marcos indeed i have although Galax believes that your station is flimsy and it is a surprise that you have f f fared in this environment as well as you did. Ga Galax at the back just nods his head and goes, Yep. Surprises me every day. <laughs> the station can pack quite a wallop. At least for those that are in our galaxy mm. there's a slight nod as all of the exo nod in kind of creepy unison uh, lieutenant demos as you uh, you pick up a slightly subtle tinge in the conversation being once again entangled with the neural sphere generated by exos intercommunicating one another it's not actual communications more like a manifestation of thoughts, ideas, feelings, that sort of thing. Hmm. So, while you are around, I would think it close to an empathy with willing, close to an empathic um, ability within, with your, with willing exo. Okay. Just in case you wish to expound upon that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Can I, um, since they are robotic in nature, mm -hmm. um, can as an empath, can I check? Can I feel any of that? I don't believe you can. Uh, their brains are literally on another 
plane of existence. existence. Nope, for this time, for this, you are completely blank to their emotional state. Even Jargavim is sitting quite peacefully. Iris, will, oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Doran was just going to clear his throat. So, have you guys had a chance to look over our star charts and compare them to yours? Hmm. Uh, Celine, sure. Celine steps or leans inward. We have, whilst the stellar objects appear to be within a reasonable. Uh, dis within a reasonable degree of drift from one another according to yours it is surprising that there isn't as much life forms and given your gracious um, ah, given your gracious access to your species to your versions history our philosophers our philosopher scientists believe that it might have something to do with the fact that that there was no species encountered that we claim to be preservers. Uh, the um, bit of research I did when I got here was actually I checked a few of the local clusters to actually have the Elysium library again, though I went back and did some searching. We encountered Vulcan. The planet was barren, mostly irradiated. So if there was life that evolved there, they nuked themselves into oblivion. Although life on what you call Andor and Teller Prime never evolved. The only thing that um, I could see different really was just how our planets really changed. Our solar system never went through the, the hardship that yours went through. Venus became a tropical world that we in inhabited. No, the non-changed humans inhabit, which they renamed to Eden. So, yeah, different stellar events seem to have shaped our universe different from yours. Polymar, go ahead. For perfect. Early Vulcans were very barbaric, but if the perver uh, preserver theory is correct, that could also be a possibility of why you found these non-traces of the other species. Most likely. <laughs> it just means that humans got lucky in the sense that we evolved into the same shape like you did. Either way, Polymarcos, as promised, of course, we have, as a share of cooperation, our historical databases have been downloaded into your stations for cultural comparison. Now, on to the matter of hand, Captain. I couldn't help but no, I could not help but notice that there is our representatives from a number of species that live on your station. I believe you call them ambassadors? That would be correct. Yeah. He... Uh, Demos, you pick up a swelling sense of pride and a little bit of nervousness coming from Iris as Polomarcos continues to speak. One of our individuals has requested to remain as an ambassador. And he tests the word out as if using it for the first time. He gestures to Iris. She has never... She has only known warfare for most of her life in, as a security agent and a defender of the people. But now she wishes to learn and, commun and improve communications. If that is acceptable, he looks to Demos instead of the captain as he says that. I would be more than happy to welcome her as an ambassador, should she wish it. Demos just gives her a little head tilt, but he just gives a very small nod. There's 
Uh, she, she doesn't have, or what little bit of a mouth she has curls up, and it's quite lost in her, how the angle of her face, or her sculpted face, casts a shadow over her lower portion. Uh, her eyes gleam. Thank you. I look forward to serving my people in a new way. And I look forward to getting to know uh, more exos than I knew before. Yes, Captain. I believe that now the exo population on this station will have doubled. That it will have. <laughs> we'll make sure that uh, you have quarters assigned to you so that you can well, feel at home here. Splendid. At which point, Galax just sort of slams his hand down on the table, accidentally cracking and sending a spider web of cracks throughout the, uh, eh, throughout half or throughout his half. Right. I can see this is getting boring. I'm going back to my. Sh I'm going back to the ship. Make sure that all the weapons are secured for launch. I have seen what these Ferengi do to unguarded merchandise. I don't trust them. And without... I think some people on this station would share that sentiment. Dorham just talks to himself. I rather like them. They're very crafty. Kevin's making... has a little pad on his side at all times right now, and he's just subtly making a note as to what parts of the station we need to repair from Galax's intervention. <laughs> All the doorways. All of them. Either that or the station's getting a remodel. <laughs> it's not even two years old. Nope. It's actually just made its... Uh, this will be its 13th month of uh, continuous operation. Huzzah. <laughs> uh. Just goes to show the amount of shit we get in. <laughs> this is true. What was I... Oh. I had a quick uh, out-of-character question for you, Shizno. Mm -hmm. Remind me, the Exos, when they're created, they're quote-unquote built or something? I can't remember the exact, whatever, your headcanon for their creation is. Uh, so when they're built, they are basically, they get given a nondescript frame, and then they're allowed uh, a year's time to find out what their identity is. Uh, who they want to be in, and they go for it from there. Uh, some exos <clears throat> will go into a larger frame if they want to be more construction, or they go into a smaller frame if they want to be more uh, in uh, different aspects of the, their duties, so like a skill frame. Um, but then they also assign, if they wish, uh, their own gender. Oh, okay, cool. Neat. Hence why Polymarkos is androgynous. Fair. Nifty. Okay. Yes. That's cool. As the evening uh, wears on, chat turns from this, the strictest of diplomacy to more of a casual banter. Um, Caver Caverdin talks about his brushes with the Jin Sul and a few other spe alien species that were more interested in plundering their technology than offering aid. Iris is just sort of leaning back, taking in as much as she can since she's going to be working with all of you and while Celine is definitely trying to interject herself into conversations uh, Demos you're sending your uh, her neural sphere is generating just a little bit of apprehension she's gonna take a long drink and then he's just gonna look at her he's like speak <sighs> direct as ever father Mm. Well, I was expecting you to be disappointed that I would be, or that I would not be staying. Well, I am sad that you won't be staying. I had hoped you would after we've been gone for so long. Uh, she sighs. I would, mm. I would like you to reconsider. I know, Father. But... If anyone has taught me duty, it is you. Also, there's an interesting 
Exo, who is working in engineering that has caught my fancy. He's pretty good with a uh, thermionic pistol, as well as he is with a spanner rod. Well, I'm going to have to meet him. And impart to him the wise words of a father. Let's wait until we actually, you know, get to know each other a little better first before I introduce, before I bring him home to meet you. Well, if you don't bring him home, I'll take the Apollo and find you too. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks, thankfully, Father. And she pulls out a small disc and slides it your way. Uh, you recognize it as a uh, quantum or a quantum entangled com or quantum entangled, yeah, quantum entangled particle communicator. No. Oh, hey. I was actually thinking about trying to get one of these so I could stay in contact. Oh, Father, I was just waiting for the a more appropriate time. I wasn't... Oh, I was thinking that this would be a little awkward in front of all of your friends. Oh, you're speaking like an Athenian. Come on. You're the daughter of Demos. And my grandfather yes. came from Sparta. Do you think he was nice with words or his actions? <laughs> Probably not. Nope. <laughs> Very well. I shall be sure to go back and be extremely direct with this individual. Good. That way there he'll know if he's either made you happy or has made you mad. <laughs> he'll do everything in his power, better, to make sure you stay happy. Of course. It's a shame, though. I would have liked to have had you on my security team. <laughs> uh, Cap, I would have liked to have you on mine. Well, we know if I came back to the Elysium, I'd be back in engineering. Well, but these frail humans, aliens, it'll just give a chuckle. They need more protection. And now that uh, the Elysium will be within good Federation distance, you guys will have support. She nods. Captain, what do I have to do to get another drink around here? If you want recommendations, I would recommend going down to the Eclipse. Ah, yes, the blue bar. Splendid. As she stands up, she looks over at Sulkin. Join me. I s your directness and... There. Your directness intrigues me. You communicate so differently than everyone else here. Welcome to a Vulcan. Uh, <clears throat> and with that, these and does anybody else have anything they wish to do during this particular scene? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna talk to uh, Caverdon. Okay. So Caverdon, the uh, Federation Engineering Corps. I know they've offered numerous times to board the vessel to help with repairs. Most of them, though, from what I understand, were more interested in the the Hephaestus core. Yes. It is because we, we have had... Uh, we have not had good experience with aliens on our ships in the past. For good reason. While the Federation appears to be more benevolent than many... We wish to be cautious and find ourselves first before sh sharing what we have learned with others. I know this is going to put kind of a sour mood in the Federation's mouth, but when you do decide to share information, withhold the Omega Particle information. And he's just saying yeah. that openly to everyone. Yeah. He, ch uh, he chuckles and thank. Thankfully, all of you are senior staff and thus know about the Omega Directives. He chuckles. It sounds a little bit like a uh, poorly, uh, poorly calibrated uh, bass speaker. That, uh, that's 
we did this we may we uh, that, that we came to the same decision with the interlink i believe that it is best for our ind our people that such a technology remain proprietary i'm thinking 300 maybe 400 years then they should be ready we shall see it's with all this life in the galaxy it prevents a new degree of or new elements of chaos that we were not that we never had to encounter in our own universe we shall uh, we shall reevaluate in a century he stands up demos i and he he extends his hand in a warrior in a warrior handshake I'll reach out and take it. Demos, I wish you I... lead our people. Yes. You no longer need to call me by my last name. You can call me by my first, Xenocrates. Xenocrates. So... <laughs> you serve our people well, even though you do not wear our uniform. I look forward to hearing your. I look forward to hearing more about your encounters with other species and whatever chaos you might encounter with these and should you ever wish it our chain of command is sorely lacking in certain areas and we can probably find you a uh, more a position with more responsibility than you previously had should you ever wish to return yeah, probably 50 years time I have already started to count down. <laughs> With your you leave. Take care. Yes. You as well. And he'll turn and head away. Selene. Uh, Selene uh, stands up, turns around, looks at everyone, gives the. gives a lieutenant. at uh, Zeracles? Uh, a big hug. Which sounds pretty much like two cars c crashing in slow motion. And then she strides off following Polomarcos. Or the Polomarcos, since that's the title, not a person. Also, who did she hug for a second? You said Xerocles? I thought that was how you pron pronounce your name. Xenocrates. Xenocrates. I'm going to have to add that to your character sheet so I don't forget. <laughs> Xenocrates, sorry. No one's ever asked him about his first name, so... <laughs> no. That's true. Nope, it wasn't until you introduced your daughters that I'm like, oh, they actually have... There's a first name, okay. He's just the Slayer Demos of Borg. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Xenocrates. First name, Xenocrates. There we go. Iris stands up shortly afterwards. Well, now that I will be serving in a role more uh, quite different, I would request a meeting with the fellow ambassadors. Captain Father, if you could introduce me, I would greatly appreciate it. I'm sure that such a meeting could be introduced. Excellent. It would be helpful if I was on the right layer. There we go. <clears throat> okay. And with that, we are going to have a time skip of a couple days. With with little fanfare, the Elysium departs early, early the next morning and during the early hours of Alpha Shift. The USS Laden, or sorry, the USS Arion, is and two other fleet vessels are present to watch her off, to give her a send off during such time that it was present your sensors your long range sensors and your list, uh, a few uh, covert listening posts detected several uh, list ships from other species of the Lasai expanse approaching it at what they believe would be a safe distance None of them actually approached or made contact, but it was interesting to see who took note. Uh, one thing I'll say for the Elysium, it mm -hmm. doesn't warp out. Yeah. Um, 
Instead, it, it accelerates to uh, sub uh, light speeds, and it looks like it's building up like a cloud as it's flying, and then it just gets faster and faster till it's engulfed in this blue light, and it just zips on past. Ooh. Nifty. It sounds no, like you... the uh, um, the uh, yeah, the Star Trek motion picture warp speed effect. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Cool. And just as quickly as it entered your, this area of space with a bit of a fanfare, it leaves with just as much fanfare. Uh, so there will be a couple days downtime before the next plot hap before the main plot happens is there anything that you guys would like to do in the downtime uh um, yeah i want to work on that thing i've been wanting to work on verity for a long while I mean, ah the, the holographic thing with keevan if i recall right yeah okay let's do that in one of the labs let's do this one seems like a good lab to be in sure Okay. Uh, Kevin, Demos, and Midas are all present, working on what I believe would be some sort of wristwatch-style attachment. More like an arm brace, but yeah, okay. like uh, when Kevin walks in, he sees Galen, and he just looks up like, "Hey, this thing is stuck to a default appearance. I need this changed." He turns it off, and it's back to Demos, and he's like, "Well, that's um." Something called an emergency whatever hologram. It was one of his stashes. Here you go, Kevin. Take a look at it. And... Kevin's quiet. He's talking, yep. but I can't hear him. Yeah, I don't hear him either. Um, Kevin, can you jump out and jump back into Discord? And see if that does the trick? Or you might be muted. I was wondering why he was kind of quiet in the latter half. Or I muted my ah, headset geez. on the other thing. <laughs> okay. okay, there's the volume. All right, all right, cool. As I... <laughs> Sorry, everybody, for deafening. Jeez. Okay, I'm just going to turn your headset down a bit on my <laughs> side. Okay, uh, let's try that again, please. So, uh, Commander Keevan, you walk in and see... The oh the previous uh, emergency medical holographic program, aka Galen. Um, Demos, is that you? Uh, yeah, it's set to a default appearance. Apparently, whatever used to use this was a emergency something hologram, and I need to be able to customize. An EMH, yeah, that shouldn't be much of a diff difficult thing to do. We should be able to just go ahead and start reprogramming it just with a basic superstructure of the image. So, what's the image that we were working on again? Uh, and he'll pull up a um, a picture of Verity without her implant. He's like, hmm. Well, yeah. If at all possible. Absolutely. There's the uh, picture. <laughs> yeah, that shouldn't be much of an issue. I mean, pretty much all we have to do is just, you know, put an image over it and restructure the holographic imagers to compensate for that. But we should probably do a bare wipe of the um, hollow emitter. Yeah, that... That guy's kind of creepy looking, not gonna lie. Um. Yeah, I was actually thinking this could be used more widespread amongst the interlink, too, as a way to help uh, rehabilitate. Also, prevent maybe some persecution against him as well. It's probably not the most, um. Yeah, probably not the most, um, bad idea. Not bad idea at all. Um, yeah, with the prejudice and all that, that would definitely be a little harmful for them. Uh, we should probably, what we can probably do is recreate this down to a base model and then go ahead and, you know, reformat, you know, format all to start a similar process and then do the alterations as we go. Well, 
You sound like more of the expert than me, so I'll let you lead. Well, well, I had to do a little excess restudying recently, so, you know, yeah. Oh, yeah, congratulations, by the way. Thanks, I mean, I know you, you've had a much bigger adventure than I have recently, but I, I appreciate that. It's just, apparently the commanders thought that, commander and the captain thought I should, you know, go for the test, so I went for it. Yeah, you passed. Yep. Well, that means you don't treat me any differently. I'm just telling you that right now. Oh, okay. Sure. <laughs> I, I didn't plan on doing that anyways. I, just, I still call you sir. All right. Well, let's go. Let's go ahead and get this started. Let's let's see that emitter and let's see if we can get Galen's face off of it first. All right, so since you guys might need momentum, if you could please roll me a Control plus Engineering. Demos can assist with Control Engineering. This is going to be a difficulty zero test, just because very familiar piece of tech, and you might need some momentum soon. So... Did the sheets get updated? Did they? I don't... They look a little more crisper. They oh yeah, slightly different. Them. Oh yeah, huh. Interesting. Yeah, the color balance uh, would is a force. Yeah. Uh, would uh, force fields as a focus? Because that's what a hologram is. Stretching, stretching. I'll let that work. <laughs> and technically, if I'm resetting this, I am reverse engineering it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> just be glad we're not doing a matic and just using power systems for everything. Yeah. Okay, that is three successes total, so three momentum to you guys. And I'm more than happy to just let this f uh, screen f uh, scene fade to black unless... Because nothing is going to explode unless you actually want it to. No, as long as yeah. it's a success. Cause it's, oh, yeah. it's a gift for Verity. Yep. It'll take a... As it... Sorry? As it fades to black, it's like, Hey, Demos, plus next time... Next time you have a, um emergency with your people, try to leave some of the wiring in this bay a little bit together. Thanks. Oh, yeah, I saw a, um, a price list for all the items I damaged. It looked like it was made by a Tellerite. <laughs> uh, love it. <laughs> okay, anybody else have anything they'd like to do? Not particularly a scene, but okay. I'll make it sure. stated that uh, Dolrum would be visiting the new, like, marketplace. Ah, yes. I believe um, I had that name listed somewhere, but yes, the it's an open air farmers market kind of place. Yeah, it's uh, Cerberus's own. That's it, Cerberus's own, a local farmers market craft shop that is visited by that anyone who is a who is currently on Cerberus can attempt to buy and sell whatever they wish, so long as it falls within, you know. Starfleet laws and regulations for what can and can't be sold. The most interesting thing is it has been taken on by a Patu, your dear husband. Yes, a Patu worked on this behind my back. Yes. How you feel about that is completely up to you. However, he does bring home a little bit extra more, because there wasn't a heck of a lot of money just running station bot or station hydroponics. So now he has a little bit more money, and now can actually afford the proper, you know, quote unquote, authentic uh, Cerberus merchandise from the Ferengi, uh, the, from the Ferengi store instead of just the knockoff stuff also sold at the Ferengi store. <laughs> <laughs> but the next couple days pass fairly quietly, uh, and Iris is met with great eagerness from the rest of the ambassadors. Uh, she appears to be making a name for herself, even a as just because she is a f female version of Demos, who quite frankly scares most of the ambassadors ever so slightly, and secondly because well it's a new friend on the station. So we are going to cut to the operations center.
and it's approaching mid-afternoon. Uh, the lunch break has just started for many folks on Alpha Shift, and Lieutenant Deckard is once again probing the Transwarp Hub with as many as much station resources as is allowed. No one's around to tell him to no, so of course he's going to do as much as he can. However, pretty quickly the captain, um, yeah, Commander Dalrum, your your uh, tactical console lights up, indicating an incoming hail from the Beta Three Graviton Station. I look at it. Captain, we have a uh, incoming hail from the Graviton Station. Putting it on screen now. Appearing on station, or appearing holographically, is Captain Hamasi. Captain Crawford, this is Captain Hamasi, who is the captain of a glorified pop-up trailer, apparently. Seriously. Anyways, I just thought you'd like to know that as of approximately ten minutes ago, a small armada of Vitar ships broke through their well, via, broke through their established borders, zizzed right past us, and are making a beeline to the your station. Have fun with that. Thank you for the heads up, Captain. Yes, they should be there in about, oh, I'd say they're traveling at warp 8.5. I think they'll be here in about two hours. I'm actually surprised they could get that go that fast. I thought their ships flew apart at the first sign of any instability. Hmm. Well, I appreciate it, and I guess we have to deal with something else today. That's why they pay us the big bucks, Captain. Well, that's why they pay you the big bucks. Apparently, I'm going to be captain of this slingshot facility. Yeah. Big yeah. bucks. Well, I mean, it, not every day you get to slingshot ships across the galaxy. True, but it's becoming routine. Anyways, bye. And with that, Hamasi signs out. Something tells me she needs a little adventure in her life. Uh, I think we all do, even on this thing. Uh, Lieutenant yep. Darval. Yes, Captain. I don't think they're necessarily here to be hostile, but just in case when they're about... 30 minutes out, put the station on yellow alert. Yes, Captain. Captain Crawford to Lieutenant Demos... Demos here. We might need you up here in ops soon because we just received the communication from Captain Hamasi at the Graviton station that apparently there is a Vitars Armada headed our way. Very well. I will coordinate efforts to get people in shelters and bunkers. Then I'll join up there. Thank you, Lieutenant. Sir, may I suggest we go to yellow alert now? Of course. Lieutenant, place the station on yellow alert now. Lieutenant Rafati pushes the giant yellow button on his tactical console. The station lights dim all over from decks 1 all the way down to deck 200 and take on a yellow tinge in the necessary areas. Uh, yellow alert mornings begin to flash civilians who uh, some civilians who are new to the station look up with a little bit of panic and apprehension the other civilians who look up who have been here a while look up shrug and go back to their business it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah that seems about right <laughs> oh look it's a tuesday yeah well actually it's every other friday at this rate but doom boom meta. Okay. <laughs> no, the deliveries on are, are getting things are getting installed on Tuesday. Yes. 
<clears throat> as long as we have photon torpedoes. Mm -hmm. Captain, listening. Uh, Sorry, yes, Demos? Yeah, no, I was just going to have uh, Demos and Scott uh, coordinate, gain everyone into safety. If we could do that as like an advantage type yeah. thing to save lives. Sure. Um, you could either spend mo spend two moment. Actually, you have the AI system, so you can only you can spend one momentum to gain that advantage, or you can do a roll for it. Let's do a roll. Uh, yeah, let's do a roll. Okay. Uh, so if you could please roll me presence plus security, and either Scotty's character or the station can assist. Uh, presence security or computer security. And I will say that this is a difficulty one. Presence command, present security? Uh, present security. Uh, you know what, I'll buy a momentum, I'll buy, I'll buy a dice with momentum. Sure thing. Three. Uh, intruder protocol, so I'm just getting yep. everyone in place. If we do get breached, they know where to be at. Precisely. That works for me. Dolrum assist? Dolrum can assist, Ooh. yes. Really? Um, Starbase protocol? Yep, Starbase protocol works. <clears throat> no. Too many new people on the station causing panic. Seemingly. No kidding. <laughs> okay. That's, uh, my, that's my idea for the complication. Yeah, that's basically how it's going to be. Um, for future reference, uh, I've, after going through the rules, I wasn't entirely sure where the idea of, that you could buy a complication off with momentum came from. So I'm going back with the rules as written, which say that you can buy a complication off by giving me two threat. So Neat. something to keep in your back pocket. Either way, you... I will... Do, yeah. well, do, what was the difficulty again of the task? Uh, one. Difficulty one. Okay. I'd say let's buy it off so we have the t like the advantage. Well, you'll have the advantage. You've passed the test. So they will get there. Uh, the problem is is that a number of injuries due to the panics has caused a small riot. So several civilians and a few Starfleet personnel attempting to maintain order have ended up in sickbay for the next couple hours. While Dr. Okay. Salkin and his uh, triage crew uh, go to work making making sure that they're all right. Okay. Yes. And it's such that that uh, even the civilian uh, medical individuals are called up, which would be Dr. Abbott. Because she's a doctor too, who I need to include more because I think it's awesome. Anyways, moving on. Uh, back in ops, everyone is slightly tense and not much else is going on. Captain, says Lieutenant Durval, you asked to be reminded of 30 minutes before the fleet arrived. Thank you, Lieutenant. Um, seems like I should address a little more importantly, depending on the matter. And he's just gonna... He's gonna quickly change into, like, the slightly more formal, like, uh, diplomatic right. uniform. Okay, so Sailor Moon transformation takes place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just because I find it an, an amusing thing. It's very good Spinning thing. in the air. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. I like it. Yep. I do too. Where are my ships? I had them up a few minutes uh, ago. Can is everyone okay if I um, just because in the back of my head always cautious about this? going to give you one momentum if everyone's okay with that and one threat for body armor hmm. uh, just in case we get boarded security is taken yeah, care of yeah yeah i'm okay with that okay Makes so sense. we should be we should be down to one momentum now because we yep. did use one to get another dice and actually we should be down to zero because it's a scene change yes indeed <laughs> you <Okay>. suck <laughs> yep <laughs> Well, we were about to Sorry do for that. keeping track of the momentum. <laughs> okay, so. Captain, the fleet has entered the Carceri Nebula. I am performing scans now. 
Uh, so, if Mr... I guess Scotty, you're... We don't have a proper tactical officer. Should probably make one as a supporting character. Rafati's more of a detective than a tactical officer. But anyways, if uh, Scotty, you could please roll me s insight plus security. And the station can assist with sensors plus security. And this is going to be a difficulty of one. Let's see, uh, I'll grab the station. Would any of my focuses work here? Um, remind me of what they are. Starbase Protocol, Combat Training, Diplomacy, Starfleet Tactical System, Survival, Composure. I will let either uh, Combat Protocol or Tactical Systems work here. Take it. And you said it was Sensor Security? Sensor for Security, yep. Okie doke. <clears throat> well, apparently uh, Deep Space 15's... Uh, just liking things. Uh, sorry, what was that there, Dalrum? What, what's the difficulty? A difficulty of one. It's going to do standard roll. All right. And that's one momentum. So two successes, one momentum. Got it. Okay, so what you see is... It would help. Wrong screen. Right screen. Uh, what you see is the uh, this uh, starship has been registered on by the station's bef uh, systems before. It is the Kovamesh, either uh, one of the uh, flagships for one of their multitude of space for uh, space fleets. As the largest known, uh, ah, this class is a Spartan. Or no, sorry, uh, this is a class of ship that I didn't actually write down, but yes, it is a large carrier type ship and has is the largest that Starfleet has observed of the numerous ships within the Vitars Imperial forces. It has also suffered a severe amount of hull damage. Uh, it's leaking fire. Uh, its shields have uh, appeared to be flickering on and or going up down. And it's one of its engine pylons appears to be uh, falling apart at the seams. And that could be because it is being chased by several other Vitars ships. Oh, good. Uh, as you uh, as you are re as you are relaying this information, Dalrum, once again. Your incoming communications signal lights up. Sir, we're being hailed. I'm assuming it's the Kova Mesh. Yes. It's On the Kova Mesh. Hmm. Hits the button. Yeah. Appearing on screen is on screen, not on scream. <laughs> Although there is screaming in the background. Uh, blaring, th sh uh, shouting to be heard over several alarm systems. Uh, is your is Adrak Charmal the the admiral equivalent who has had numerous run-ins with the station and the Nighthawk Federation Starbase? This is Adrak Charmal of the well, formerly of the Vitars Imperium military forces. I am requesting medic. I am requesting protection. And asylum, we carry the we carry the injured form of or we carry the injured body of our of our imperator, and request medical assistance for him. Well, out of character, can't really say no to that. No, <laughs> that. of course. Uh, turn number Adrak would be his rank, correct? Correct. Of course, Adrak. We'll prepare what we can for your people. Mm. Lieutenant Darval, prepare a communication to go out to all the other Vitar ships. Preparing, Captain. Communications are ready, sir. Ships of the Vitars Imperium. 
the Kova Mesh and its crew are now under the protection of Cerberus Station. We don't want to fight with you, so we ask that you turn back now. As you give that order, the USS Arian and whoever is currently in command of it swoops in alongside the Kova Mesh and arms weapons. That seems to be enough. Uh, the fleet br uh, breaks into two. Several of them seem to lose heart and move away in quite a disorganized fashion. Only two of them remain, but, but they decide to stay at a very, very safe distance while the Kova Mesh is brought uh, is brought alongside. It is a scale six ship, which is just large enough to fit inside the station. If you wish to do it. Yes. Yeah. Um, I will, like, rush down to uh, meet the Kova Mesh and whatever bay that it uh, that it settles into. Okay. Uh, Medical emergency. Yeah, I yep. was just about to ask that. Uh, Doctor Salkin, you are in sick bay, treating uh, the treating the injuries of a small human child, who in the chaos of everything ran smack dab into a uh, closed or a reinforced wall, broken nose, nothing major. While you get when you get the communication uh, that there is a medical emergency in, and to meet at the airlock to docking bay five. Right, I'll uh, have. Uh... Uh, the civilian doctor take over for the child. Uh, Abbott will gladly take over. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll grab my medical pack and head to the docking bay. Very well. We will go to airlock security. Okay. Hi, Prince Aksha. Yes. Prince Aksha, who doesn't realize that he is not being paid to be in the scene, walks off in a huff. <laughs> oh, uh, Midas is here too. Neat. Uh, me. I mean, you didn't expect a, you know, a potential uh, combat situation without Midas keeping an eye on things, do you? Fair. Uh, okay. <laughs> His who else? Little laser lights point on the eject airlock button. <laughs> uh, so we have. Crawford, we have the doctor. Uh, anyone else coming down? Uh, I'll send Rainer down. Okay. Keevan will be down there for um, support of the, you know, to check on the ship and see if there's any, you know, anything that needs to be taken care of. Okay, and that would be Mr. Keevan. Dolrum's going to stay and monitor the situation outside in case. The pew pews need to be pew pew. Understandable. Thankfully, the pew pews don't really need to be pew pewed at the moment, but you have the giant f um, fire torpedoes button highlighted and ready to hit, just in case. <clears throat> Down at uh, the airlock to docking bay 5, Adrak Charmal strides right through. He is cradling one uh, he's cradling one of his arms and holding it it appears to be broken his sidearm is setting off every sort of detector in the uh, security ah, in the in the security scanner but he doesn't seem to care he looks behind him or he casts a worried glance behind him as a male dressed in the finest and most garish robes you've seen since uh, Prince Aksha and his ilk were on board, is being brought out on a stretcher, like a physical stretcher, not one of those fancy hover stretchers, a stretcher. And there is another individual following behind, a fat, puffy individual who shares more in common with a Tellarite than a Vitars, who's sort of waddling behind his he's trying to look tough but his eyes are just overwhelmed with everything Adrak Charmal 
or the Adrak stops, stands, and bangs his bangs his fist against his chest as a military greeting. Captain Crawford. And Captain Crawford will return the greeting. Adrak Tarmal. Not entirely sure I'm actually part of the military anymore, although my Imperator is with me, so I guess I might be what's left of it. Anyways, um, the Vitaris Imperium is not what it was. Our Imperator, or our Imperator Japler the Final, long may he live, may not actually be living for much longer. We can't. We've performed the. Um, We've, re we've performed a memory transfer into new bodies, but they keep suffering w degrading mental conditions, indicating that this is a psychotic problem instead of a physical one. And Director FOMO over there, he casts a glare. He, if he could uh, radiate death from his eyes like c Cyclops, uh, the Director would no longer exist. Has insisted that his memory enograms are the same as they sh were the day that the, that he was or that the imperator was first uploaded i've stopped I trusting him lieutenant commander i want you to see to the imperator personally and see what you can do Yes, Captain. I've had not much experience physically with the Vitross, but I've read quite a bit on their physiology and their transfer. Please. No. Adrak, oh, sorry, uh, it would be more precedent if we take the Imperator to, to, to our sickbay instead of in the hallway. Of course. Uh, lead the way. Uh, Imperator Japler the final is carted on a stretcher by two of his bodyguards, which is not the duty that they had signed up for when they first took on the role however long ago, but it is one that they do now. Uh, the director, who is wearing a completely different set of clothing than the more military dressed Adrak or the formally dressed uh, Imperator just sort of mumbles thank you and tries to keep up with the parade that is most likely going at a half sprint to the turbo lift. Now, Adrak, you said that you are no longer part of the Imperium because of how they've changed. I'm going to need a little bit more detail about that. He pauses. Uh, last season, it was broadcast to the populace as a whole what the Imperator has been doing with those who share a different viewpoint than the Imperator. He locked... Instead of attempting to Instead of accepting their views, as the Imperator once did, he's, he started locking them away in, a isolated, in an isolated um, area of one of our moons. It was kept secret from several, including myself. I must say that I was not... I did not... I do not support such an action, and I did not then. It is only my military rank that kept me this, that has kept me from suffering a, f well, fate like them. He swallows, trying to find the next, his next words. But we are a, an impassionate people, Captain. When the, when, when we feel hatred and a spark of desire it's it catched like a flame he pauses and sighs I guess I'm just too old to feel it and do you know for how long this has been going on 
Ah, we've known of the ex we've known of the existence of this area of the moon for a few generations. It's where some individuals who choose not to undergo the trans undergo the transfer decide to call home. But we were unaware of the Imperator's zealous desire to use it as a means of silence and criticism, which has become louder and louder and his actions became more and more swift and rash. Hmm. And you said this might have something to do with the with an error in the I believe you called it an uploading process? Yes. We, we fear that uh, we fear that the Imperator's mental process or mental state is decaying and we are not well as a species we are not well equipped to deal with psychological trauma our counselors have attempted to diagnose him her whichever form she, they decided to take but well you try telling a, the leader of your people that there is something wrong with them and see how well that works certainly understand that uh i guess is is sulkin gone because he's still on the map but uh, yeah sorry sulkin should no, be no no we're going yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> i was gonna say i'm not standing around waiting for this conversation no. i'm taking yeah. him to medbay and also on a side note when we get to medbay i'm taking him in the medbay uh captain fancy pants there can stay outside <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, if he was, uh, you know, Vitar's soldier, he might have done something to do something about that, but he's not. So he will just sort of shuffle himself off into a corner and try not to collect too much dust. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, I also noticed that the server has gone red. One second while I change server locations to see if that helps. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's go here. Okay. That will hopefully be a bit better audio quality. I apologize for that. Now. Uh, as as they're discussing things, um, as they're discussing things of a political nature, Keevan, you are investigating the state of the Kova Mesh. Uh, you're pretty sure that, well, understanding... Vitar ships is understanding that the soldiers inside of them are functionally pretty much immortal or don't view their lives as much of anything because if they die then their brains can be re-downloaded into new bodies so their ships might forego several safety uh, or s several structural modifications and other safety systems to keep their ship intact more and it's probably due to this Kova Mesh's size that it has survived, rather than anything on its structural integrity, which now is more or less comparable to that of Swiss cheese. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. <sighs> so, ne needless to say, the Kova Mesh will not be flying anywhere soon, and if it were e to even power on its reactor in this stage, uh, you might have to evacuate uh, the outer ring area due to the amount of radiation it would be leaking. Yeah, so let's make sure that we have crew down here. He's going to make sure that there's crew down there to make sure that nothing happens to the Kova Mesh because we don't need to be evacuating the outer ring. A wise decision, both from a commander uh, standpoint and as a chief engineer standpoint. You mean you don't want everyone to light up like Christmas tree? No, I'll have them do that during Christmas. I'll just start flooding everybody with radiation in the replicators during Thanksgiving. Look, he's all grown up. <laughs> <laughs> he has enhanced commander protocols now, and he's going to use them, dang it. <sighs> 
all in all, there's a grand total of 100 uh, Vitaris individuals who are currently seeking assistance or asylum on the station. Most of them are wearing either civilian garb or really heavily beaten up military wear. And if pressed, you realize that they all come from different regiments or different arms of the Imperium's military forces. This is definitely not a f this is definitely not the unified military force that once was. A game question? Yes. Is, Rock Bo is Rocket Boy here? <laughs> uh, no, not no. Rocket Boy is sadly uh, fame went um, fame went to his head, and he's decided to become a public face for. You know, overthrowing the derelict uh, monarchy. You could kind of blame it on him. <laughs> yeah, you sort of could if you wanted to. Okay. Yep, yep. I think his name was Gratz, if I remember right. Yeah, Gratz. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, he was the one I made into a hologram and yeah. blah, blah, blah. Yeah, him. Okay. Yep. For those who are wondering what has happened with the Vitaris Imperium, I recommend that you watch the last uh, season of Nighthawk. You know, cross promotion and all that. Otherwise, we will accept the tale as told. <laughs> we cut to the infirmary. Where? It's been a while since so I've done tokens here. So we have that there. We have that there. Uh, we have Imperator Japler the Final taking a... in an isolated diagnostic area. Correct. And his guards can stay out front, but that's it. Yeah, first we have that there. We have ourselves a... Uh, where, oh, where did the director go? There it is. We have the director sheepishly sitting down, trying to maintain eye contact with uh, the Delton Lieutenant Ashea, and every time she does, she smiles. He gets embarrassed and looks down again. Uh, let's have... Where is the civilian doctor? Miss... I had her token out, too, but that was on a different sheet. Dr. Abbott? Yes. Uh, Dr. Abbott, everything is going as well as can be expected uh, when all of a sudden there is a loud crashing as two in... or Vitars are carting in... Well, the Imperator in, causing all sorts of rubbernecking. There's Dr. Abbott's token. Thank you for finding her. Uh, Dr. Sulkin travels in right behind with his trying to, well, trying to keep up while at the same time holding one of those handheld medical scanners over top of the unconscious Vitar's mail. As soon as we get him into a medical bed, I want to do a full scan. Of course you do. Uh, so this is going to be a insight medicine. Uh, the and either um, one of the med one of the other medical support characters can assist or the station can assist, whichever way you would like this to go. Uh, this is going to be a difficulty three. Um, so Abbott will be running in behind you. Okay. I will happily take her. Cool. Uh, yep. So insight medicine from the pair of you. Uh, exobiology, cybernetics, xenobiology, um, genetics. genetics. Uh, xenobiology would work. Yes. I have genetics as well. G genetics? Internal medicine, you name it. Mm. Not, they're not cybernetic, they're genetic clones. Uh, ah, but part of their uh, lobe has been removed and is actually a literal computer. Okay. Yep. Gotcha. Okay. Yep, that's the part that stores their memories and enables gotcha. the upload-download okay. process. Okay. Which you don't need to roll a check to find that part out, because... You, there's enough medical history on the Vitars to know that part at least. Anyways, so that is three successes from Dr. Sulkin already. And what does Dr. Abbott do? Two successes oh. from Abbott. Nice! So that's two momentum for you guys. <clears throat> okay. So it is... Let's just get individuals out here. Dr. Walker Talk can go over here for a bit. He will bring a juice. He will bring prune juice to the director. So, uh, Director Jap or Imperator Japler, the final body is a perfect specimen of physical health. 
Uh, you find no flaws whatsoever. It is as if he had been exercising ev and eating right all day, every day, for the last 20 years. His brain, on the other hand, is quite a different story. Uh, his brain is showing all sorts of... Uh, it's showing all sorts of um, signs of uh, schizophrenia, dementia, bipolar, and something that looks like... Uh, and something that you've only seen in textbooks, um, a rare brain symptom found in Tellurites, which prevents them from actually being rude. Dr. Abbott will just look at the readings and look at the doctor. This is very strange. Finally. And can I tell if this is caused by the uh, cloning degeneration or something else? Uh, let's see. So um, if you wish to spend a momentum to ask that question, you may certainly do so. I will. I will okay. happily. So there appear. Um, so this is the first time I believe that you've actually been able to get a Vitars, quote unquote, under the knife to study how their the integration works with their download upload personality module. Um, and it is quite an impressive piece of kit. Uh, there are, like, you have. The only individuals that you've seen with a brain hardwired like that are examples why genetic uh, manipulation is strictly outlawed within the Federation. Uh, draws more in line with uh, the infamous case of Bashir, for example. Um, there, there are so many neurons connected to this device, and they are all active. As in 100... As if you had like a network connection that was up, that was just completely saturated, sending out at sending out maximum data and taking as much data in. Uh, the problem is, is it doesn't appear to be updating the module itself. It's like a hard drive that's re showing a lot of read-write activity, but not actually doing anything. And you are. You get about that far when you're about to calm the captain for an update when the station's power goes out. On, in operation, um, we're going to quickly cut to operations. We're Daldrum. Let's see. The commander, the captain, is busy chatting it up with uh, the Adrax somewhere. Commander Dalrum, you are seeing, or you're keeping a steady eye on the uh, fleet of ships. It appears that another one has found its bravery and has joined just outside of everyone's respective weapons ranges, just keeping an eye on things. There is a shrill blare from the engineering console. Rami materializes. Commander Dalrum, I, and then the power goes out all over the station quick question for you. Yes. Because I know we talked about this in the past, but did we ever have the security station set up as its own independent power supply to prevent such situations? Certain consoles do have uh, power, do have separate power supplies, yes. There's a couple consoles on in operations, security office, sick bay, etc. But The break controls would be one of them. Yes. Yeah, because I want to make sure the brigs are still working. Yeah, no, this... This station is designed with robustness in mind, and a station-wide power outage of this magnitude well, should not have happened in the first place, but it just has. Uh, Captain Crawford, you are chatting it up with, a, with the ADRAC, probably in your ready room, when the lights go out. Keevan, you're down initiating repairs are initiating repair processes on the Kova mesh when the lights go out. As soon as the lights go out and the emergency power starts blinking, Dolrum will uh, yell over uh, ops. 
Everyone get your hand phaser. We're going into power outage mode. There's a slight clatter as everyone makes their way to the wet nearby weapons locker and arms themselves. Dorum's going to go over and do the manual release on the uh, captain's ready room. Okay. And we're going to cut into the captain's ready room. Let's see. Captain's office. We have... The first time the captain actually gets to use his office. Uh, second time, I believe. But might be the first time on stream. I don't keep track, I'm afraid. Let's see. So we have the Adrac here. I believe here. it is the first time on stream. So. Yes. I need to change his token size to be the right size. Anyways. You and the Adrak are in a heated discussion of the current political events and its wide-reaching implications. Captain, when the lights go out. Uh, it's not long until the door is to your office is forced open. And in comes Mr. Dolrum. Sir, and I just hand him a hand phaser. I take it. <laughs> hmm. Something of this magnitude should not be happening, and the point that it's happening right now worries me that we could very well be dealing with a saboteur that came aboard which means we have to be prepared for boarding parties. Mm -hmm. Adric, are you willing to help us out? He nods. I shall, be I shall begin our ensuring that my personnel are able to assist, but please keep in mind that our top priority is the, sec the safety and security of the Japler, of Imperator Japler. Of course. And all understandable. You, um begin going into the lowdown of the discussion when all of a sudden you hear a hiss. It at first sounds like static coming over a poorly um, or malfunctioning speaker when you realize it's coming from the bookcase right behind you. There is a slight shimmer as this creature makes itself aware to you. Captain, you need not worry too much. For this is entirely planned. Most of your species is perfectly fine. However, be aware, be aware that the Akashi has that the Akashi Council or the Akashi Hunt and the choosing has begun. And you, Captain, are the top prize. As soon as she materializes, Dolrum would aim his, uh, his phaser and fire. Oh, awfully bold of you to assume it's a she, but okay. <laughs> it's a reptilian species, so it could be male, could be female. Um, okay, roll... Um, um, because this is a reactionary attack, roll daring security. Uh, difficulty of two. Gladly. And you know what? Um, because I have a bunch of threat to spend this episode, I'm going to spend a threat to increase the difficulty to three. I'm going to give you a threat for a third dice. I like this. I can do that. Because I have bold security. Ah. And combat training. That's definitely it. And that's five oh, successes. God. So that <laughs> is... Uh, two momentum. Yep, two momentum. <laughs> Uh, roll me some challenge dice, please. And it's two plus security or three plus security? Um, I believe it's a hand phaser. I believe it's two security. Well, is it a type one or two? Type two. Type two. He's gone. Type two is three. Yeah. yeah. So I'm rolling seven challenge dice. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That is enough. You now have an unconscious lizard form. Um, crouched or slumped over on the... Uh, slumped over on the chair. Sort of looks like a, uh, a poorly uh, draped pool noodle, really. And Dolrum will move forward. Uh, Phaser still at the ready. Captain, get behind me. And Conquered will comply. <laughs> <laughs> Dolrum's going into full like combat mode. Adrak takes cover behind the desk, pulls out 
his weapon and aims it at the creature. Adrak, it's stunned for the time being. And I start looking around. Do you have anything that we can use as a restraint in here, Captain? Um... I mean... We can maybe use the plants somehow, but I don't necessarily have rope or... Hold on. And he'll start, like... I'm assuming maybe these things here are, like, drawers of some sort. Yeah, they're drawers. I'm assuming the captain carries a spare change of uniform or, you know, clothing or stuff in them. Yeah. And he'll probably pull out, like, you know, some equivalent of, like, zip ties or something. Maybe we can use these? Well, uh, if you wish to just spend one... No, the AI system's down. You could spend two momentum for the advantage. Sure, why not? Okay. <laughs> cool. Let's see if I actually have a full picture of these guys. Otherwise, I'll upload it during the break. Uh, let's see. Anyways. So, that's going on. Demos. Uh, you are in security, maintain, ensuring that everyone is prepped and prepared for the boarding for whatever actions may happen when the lights go out. Certain, con <sighs> okay. certain consoles come back online. The Brig Energy Force Field flickers ever so quickly as it switches to uh, chemical battery backup. Thankfully, the only people in there at this time, I believe, are a couple folks who got a little rowdy at the eclipse last night and someone who had the audacity to try to pickpocket from or try to shoplift from the Ferengi. The Ferengi are still insisting that he paid double. The... I just ima imagine that he's like giving everyone instructions. The power does the flickering mm -hmm. and he just continues on like normal because everyone's been trained to expect this. Mm hmm. Like, okay, you all have your stations and assignments. The only thing we're changing up now is since we have no powers, we're going to be sending down a security team to engineer it along with engineers, and we're also going to be reinforcing the command pathways up to the ops. So we're going to be doubling up the teams there. Everyone's going to tag one of the civilian officers we have as well. We're going to be using them as reinforcements. You hear a chorus of yes sirs. As, this must get going. As they begin to do so. Uh, Keevan, the lights have gone out. What do you wish to do? He is, considering he is in the um, shuttle bay, keeping, an, you know, looking at the Kova mesh, he's going to get to the closest console and try to reestablish any kind of control with the... Um, to be able to find out, do any kind of damage control of the system. Okay. Uh, roll me Insight plus Engineering, please. This is going to be a difficulty of... If you make two successes, I will tell you what's wrong. If you make th uh, three, I will tell you why. And would troubleshooting be a viable Definitely. hook? Absolutely. Balls. Why did you uh, not take an extra... Okay. That's a good point. Yeah. So, uh, what you are able to determine is that all of the all of the reactors are down. Not just the primary bank, but the secondary as well. Uh, the only thing keeping the station online is a series of uh, chemical and uh, gas, similar enough to gas-powered um, engines and generators that are creating a sort of a power line effect throughout the station's critical systems. Uh, life support is running at minimal. Uh, anything that was required to generate a non-class M environments have ceased. And generally, if you're not a class M normal gravity person, you're going to kind of have a bad time at the moment. And also, uh, overall visibility for the station in... Uh, in the interior has dropped to roughly 30 percent uh, anything with an exterior window is uh, sort of about 50 percent because of the light coming in from the nebula 
Oof, I think I'm going to have to somehow get myself down to um, my engineering station. Ah, so that's the fun part. So uh, you're, I believe, the docking bays are roughly deck 40. The re main reactors, I believe, are deck 190. Uh, oh, that's a lot of Jeffrey's tubes. That's, well, thankfully the station has a central stairway ar artery, because that just makes sense. But still, that's 130 floors? Assuming you want to get to the reactor. You could get to Ops, which is only a 40-story, 40-deck uh, climb. climb. You know, you can do what you, do what you want. <laughs> Um, yeah, well, I said my engineering station, so yeah, yeah. up at Ops. Okay, okay. At least until I build one, uh, mid-station. <laughs> finding, finding all the milestones I haven't used. Yes, yes, indeed. Anyways. Uh, I still have one thing I'd like to do. Yes. Uh, Demos is going to be heading over to Sickbay. Mm-hmm gonna poke his head on in because we have established way back when uh, Galen almost got uh, killed and lost power and everything like that there that the medical bay does have its own power supply mm -hmm. uh, uh, he is triggering the security program uh, to have uh, emergency security personnel ah uh, so holograms okay um, if you could please roll me control plus security and if the station can assist Action. Yeah, the station will assist with computer security, but due to its current state, it's going to be a difficulty of two. All right, and I'm going to buy an extra momentum. Sure. You can buy an extra dice. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> buy yeah. an extra momentum. Um, okay. I I mean I'm more than willing to send you my shipping address if you want to you know buy me something. GM could accept bribes, but. <laughs> uh, intruder protocol. Absolutely. Goes. Right. I'll, I'll roll for um, the station. Sure thing. I just point out that it's a very good thing <laughs> that the security <laughs> station and the sick bay are all in the promenade. Yes. So that is a grand that total is. of five successes. So you get uh, three momentum out of the deal. And three holographic security personnel um, f pop into existence in the main lobby. Uh, one of them heads over to the general patient area where the nurses are busy patching up and uh, anyone that can be sent home back to their quarters safely are being encouraged to do so. And uh, I'm just erecting force fields uh, once they're cleared. Mm -hmm. Force fields in sick bay. Gotcha. Fort Knox. <laughs> okay. I believe all that's left is Sulkin. Dr. Sulkin, what do you wish to do now that the power, the power has gone out? flickered over. Uh, Sickbay informs you that it is running on emergency power and recommends that you stop all non that you cease all non elective ah, that you cease all elective surgeries. Great. Alright, so everything is mental with him and problems. Um I'm going to basically can we Use a high, I want to use a hypo spray and try to bring him out of conscious, bring him to consciousness. Okay. Uh, roll me insight medicine, please. Difficulty of one. Let's see what you roll here. That's going to be delayed. <laughs> A little Ooh. bit. Okay, so that is yep. one success, one complication. Nice. Yay. Nice. Works up. Works for me. So you can take that threat, so I don't hurt him. I mean, you succeeded. Yeah, you did succeed. So you want? So sorry. I don't are want you... the complication. Okay, I'm you're buying, buying it off. off. Yes. Okay, I will take two threat. Take two threat. Cool. Uh, he's his eyes jerk awake, uh, move and uh, move about erratically, and he inhales sharply. He sits up. Do you not know who I am? 
I am the Imperator. He looks at you. You are not my subjects. No, you are not, Vitars. Are they colluding against me too? Have the insurgents sought aid from the outside? I do not want anyone to help. I have governed the Vitars Imperium for the last 300 years. I will ensure that it will survive another 300, if not more. He looks at uh, the stern-faced Sulkin and uh, Dr. Abbott. You will have... You will not touch me. The Imperator has decreed that he shall never ever be touched by hands that are not his own. Those of his trusted Vitars. Now, I am interested in a new body. Duh. He shouts. I am done with this body. Please download me into a new one. Right now. We would if we could, but we can't, so we won't. No. Oh. It would help if you were actually focused on the action and not the uh, lovely nurse. There we go. <clears throat> I have no idea. I have no idea what you mean with this. I will not suffer this insolence. You will follow my direction. Guards! Imperium. Imperia Dark. Relax. You are in Deep Space 15, known as Cerberus Station. I am in the heart of the blood eye. I will not be suffered to be held prisoner anywhere. You will release me immediately or face my wrath. Okay, nerve pinch. Uh, while he, while uh, Jappler was going through uh, his ranting and raving, uh, Dr. Abbott, you noticed his uh, bio signs shot up tremendously high as his nervous system kicked in, or entered overdrive. His blood pressure shot up. His... Uh, nervous system lit up like a Christmas tree. And he goes down. Uh, Demos pops his head in and all of a sudden uh, three security guards pop in or materialize. Uh, two stay in the lobby. One heads to the patient wing. And out of nowhere, because I think it's funny, a wall could talk. Pulls out a medically sterilized batleth and stat and stands guard. <laughs> okay. Dr. Abbott, if you would, I am going in. Please keep an eye on my vitals and his. And <sighs> if anything changes on a medical front, Please bring myself out of this. Understood. Understood. <laughs> All right, we will take. Pl uh, we will deal with the mind meld shortly, but up in the captain's office, where another security personnel, let's say Lieutenant Rafati, has been called in, and is now standing guard, as well. The pr the ind the individual, or the limp lizard, stiffens and begins limp to, lizard. yes, begins to come around and slowly find his footing. It stands up and shakes his head as the stun effect wears off. Didn't we zip tie it? Yes, you did. Oh. But I'm assuming, you know, you know, legs, arms, tail. He's finding some way to at least regain himself. Maybe he's just rolled up on... Maybe he rolls himself into the chair. That sounds better. I enjoy the fact that... Of thinking that we zip-tied it, it to the chair. Like, legs to the legs and all that. Ah! Ah, we, the good old... Uh, just... the, the, the good old uh, James Bond uh, wicker chair scene. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> As it comes to, all it sees is... Dolrim and Rafati still having... Uh, phasers pointed at it. Mm -hmm. he, there's, it straightens his neck in a series of cricks and pops it distends its jaw and a long tongue flickers out that was not the welcome I was expecting but I must praise you on your excellent marksmanship and reactionary times I am also reptilian 
I know how I can react. Ah, a fellow warrior. You would, you would make for a great sparring partner. So what was this about you wanting to take our station? No, no, you misunderstand. The Akashi, it is time for new government. A new leader must rise and claim the pack. But in order to do so, he, he or she must prove that they are the best hunter. Uh, an, uh, the outgoing administration chooses the hunting ground and those who wish to test their metal are competing right now to see which uh, who the best most illustrious prey he blinks typically it goes by military rank understand we do not it, one of our rules is that we do not target innocent civilians. So anyone not wearing your uniforms or com, your badges, are safe. Even the civilians wear badges on the station so we can contact them. Their eyes, its eyes narrow. Then I should... Then, I'll, then I should inform the hunters that only those who've seen wearing your uniforms should be targeted. Yes. The tongue licks uh, cat, or licks at an invisible itch slightly below one of his eye, one of his eyes. Permit me to begin the ceremony proper. I am Verifier Cricked. I am here to ensure that the hunt follows the guidelines as stated in the Kree of the Akashi. Be no... I am allowed to give you, or I am allowed to tell you that there are three hunters currently vying for the role of of hunt pack leader. They are known as crits. In case you are wondering, yes, we did. We are responsible for the power loss because part of our laws require us to use minimal tools in our hunt. And so we seem it, it fair to test ourselves against you at your, with minimal tools at your disposal. Hmm. So noted. Adrak, his uh, weapon shakes slightly in his hand. I've heard tales of you. You're ghosts. You're supposed to be tales that you're, it is, you're supposed to be the hunt. You're supposed to be the silent hunter we, we people use to scare children into line. I wasn't aware you existed. The lizard, the uh, or verifier cricked, just turns his neck ever so slightly to catch the adrak within his red eyes. That is how we like it. May I ask, I know you said that this hunt is based on military rank, but how did I become the top prize of this hunt? Sir, you're the captain. You're the highest ranking official of Starfleet on this station. Yes. Well, I, I simply ask because there are many other species in this area. Are you referring to other species in this area of space? Or are you asking why we've chosen you instead of, let's say, the giant metal one in the security? Uh, he, would he would prove a formidable opponent. An opponent that you wouldn't want to face. And... I am glad that I am not one who has to face him. That would, should it come to it, that would be one of the the job of one of our crints. I am here as, as simply as a verifier. Hmm. 
And they're targeting specifically the captain. Ah, not quite, Commander. We are, if the captain proves too elusive within the time limit, then the most, whoever can capture the most illustrious prey is the one who is, who becomes Hunt, Hunt Master. I don't like the idea of my people being hunted. Rest assured, we are one of our rules is we do not kill while on the hunt. So any injuries should be minimal. Loss of life will be negligent, negligible. The prize, of course, the prize will be taken back to our home colonies paraded about and eaten at a celebratory feast. But anyone who ventures into space must know of the, or must accept the risks of doing so. And besides, the fact that you don't like it makes the hunt all the more interesting. What happens when no one, if no one is caught. If no one is caught, then it, our crints are obviously not up to the task. A new hunt will be, ch a new hunt will be chosen. New crints will step forward, and a new hunting ground will be uh, decided upon. I don't like it, Captain, but. I don't know that we have a way of stopping it. <sighs> I would tend to agree. Yes. And on that note, I think it's a good time to, for us to take our bio break. So let's come back at, oh, let's say, let's, let's try to be back f for on the hour. And we will see what happens when you guys fight uh, chameleonic lizards in darkness. See you guys soon. And we are back. Uh, so the Akashi uh, verifier has basically told you the, what's going to happen. Uh, for those of you who wish to see it on stream, this is what they sort of look like on. Uh, this is what they look like on. So they're an elongated, uh, very slim, and their joints allow them an extreme range of mobility. Definitely a predator type species. Ooh. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, he he has given you a timeline which is roughly 24 hours or so. After that, the hunt will either be declared a success or a failure. Uh, currently, TikTok, you have 24 hours to go. What happens if we capture those that are are pursuing us? then they have proven to be very poor hunters. I mean, we would prefer if you release them, but let's be honest here. This is a highly aggressive move on the on the part of the Akashi. It makes a small uh, bobbing of the head as if it as if it were a shrug. You can death is often uh pref is often the worst possible outcome. Hmm. I like the idea of capturing. I haven't gone on a hunt for a while. Since I think you're the one who's going to be telling me what to do here, Commander, where do you want me to go? 
Right now I want you pretty much attached to my hip. We need to think about where they are going to try to hurt us, because we are the prey. We have to think outside of being the prey. All right, attached to your hip it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, Uh, Dr. Salkin, are you back? I hear jittering on the microphone, but I'm not hearing you. Hello? Hello. There you are. Good. Because I wanted to run the mind meld scene before we got into this proper. So, back into the... In- back into Theater of the Mind, because this is where you are literally happening. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so, if you could please roll me a presence plus con test. Uh, this is going to be a difficulty of two. Because this is the first time you've ever done this with a Vitars, let alone one who has apparently suffered massive neural trauma. Presence Con? I think it's Presence Con, yes. Unless you care to argue something else, in which case... I'd like to argue medicine, but... You know, I'm just saying. I'm not entirely sure medicine is works for mind meld. Con is more of a control okay. factor. Where are we at on momentum? Uh, this is a scene change, so you're down to three. Okay, I will take one. All right. Wow. Just Woof. Wow. Okay. Okay. So uh so well that's uh zero successes. We are going now do you have the mind melt talent? Because I think that allows yes, you to I do, do stuff. Yeah, I do. I'm afraid I don't I remember what it does offhand. I got it marked in my book. <clears throat> Alright. I've always been a proponent of copying the actual talent out into the character sheet. I got the special edition with bookmarks, so I just got it. (laughs) Mr. Swanky. Uh, Right, right. (laughs) The Swanky RP here. You have undergone training in telepathic techniques that allow the melding of the mind through physical contact. When this requires a task of difficulty of at least one... Uh, which can be opposed with an unwilling participant. If successful, you link minds with the participant, sharing thoughts, memories. Momentum may be spent to gain more information or perform deeper telepathic exchanges. The link goes both ways and is trying and potentially hazardous process for you. Complications can result in pain, disorientation, or lingering emotional behavioral difficulties. Fair enough. Um, sadly, you didn't even make the initial connection. Uh, so, just for I fun. can use determination. You could. You could and, use determination. Uh, which is easily, I got a calm mind is one that truly knows. Mm-hmm. The mind controls the body, controls the mind, controls the body. Yep. So, either of those is good. Let's go ahead. Presence. Um. <clears throat> Let's see how well this works. A second time. It's that whole Vitaris mind thing. Oh, yes. Uh, you need to reroll one more dice, please. This is not going well. <laughs> this is not going well at all. Blaming it on their genetics. Yeah, that's um. So for whatever happen, whatever reason, I I got nothing. You wow. got nothing. Uh, so okay. a mind meld appears to be physically impossible. It's either this computer that's literally plugged into the back of their uh, brain is causing interference, or his brain is just so damaged that it's impossible to establish a stable connection. 
Okay. Mm. Now. So. Yeah. All right. I cannot make a connection that way. Um. And we now does the bio bed still working? Uh, the bio bed is still it... working. Yes. Okay. Right now, uh, because you're a chief medical officer, you get advantage within sick bay. And right now, until you, unless you tell me otherwise, I'm basically assuming that the advantage is sick bay functions as normal. Okay, that works for me. All right. So, I want to do um, a deeper scan of his brain. Okay. Um, and basically uh, get in there and see um, what's firing wrong. I know it was like lighting up like a Christmas tree, but okay. so um, this is going to be another insight medicine or insight engineering, depending on whether you want to look at the drive or the medicine side of things. Um, cybernetics, neuroscience, exobiology, stuff like that would be fine. And again, Miss if Miss Abbott cares to assist or then she is more than welcome to do so because this is going to be difficulty of uh, difficulty of two. Abbott is here to help. That's three from Sulkin, so that's one momentum already. Insight. Medicine. <clears throat> I'm assuming her xenobiology focus. Mm hmm. And once again, Dr. Skylar Abbott is cleaning shop with two more. So that's three momentum. <laughs> so Salkin, you are uh, both Salkin and Abbott come to a very similar conclusion very quickly. Um, whatever, whatever is going on inside the drive, which you haven't looked at yet, is causing a series of conflicting um, mental stimulus. Uh, so whatever the problem is, or whatever is causing the problem to the poor Imperator is being sourced from within the drive itself. And, okay, I don't really have engineering. Uh, it's, could... Uh, it's at this point that the... Uh, good doctor sticks her head in excuse me doctors i don't wish to be uh, i don't wish uh, i don't wish to intrude but the director director fomo is still outside and he's looking very and he's he looks very embarrassed about something i i'm no psychologist but he strikes me as having a guilty conscience you're a Delton. Of course you're a psychologist. Hmm. Not to the same extent as... Hmm, as a trained psychologist, but we do pick up on others' emotional vibes fairly easily. Alright. I will come out. Hmm. I'll keep monitoring him in here. Yeah, yeah, Dr. Abbott, please keep monitoring the patient. Director FOMO uh, sort of changes, not literally, of course, but he sort of just, his body is of such proportion that if he stands upright, he is more or less the same height as if he was sitting down, the same shape as if he was sitting down. Director, For, you have something to tell me. I don't know I. <clears throat> He's attempting to maintain eye contact with you and failing miserably. I don't yeah. have anything. I'm simply ensuring that my technology, the, the Eternity Research Group, is working as intended. Uh, I've performed the scans myself, and I'm more than happy to share whatever information I have. In a speech that sounds completely pre It sounds like someone who has spent all his time memorizing a line gets to the stage and blurts it out 
at like three times the speed. Director, it uh, wasn't a request. It was a command. You have something to tell me. A roll me presence plus medicine, please. On it. Uh, diff, uh, this is going to be opposed. Okay. Uh, so he will be rolling. You need to beat once. You need to be... Ah. So he's the defense, so he has one success. So you need two or more to succeed. Okay. I'm going to use one of those momentum I just got. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Dare him down. That's the two you need. I said, you have something to tell me. He, uh, whatever composure, whatever was holding, holding his uh, bulbous frame upward seems to give way as he collapses back in his chair, and, or back in the couch, and begins to sob rather uncontrollably uh, I didn't know it, it looked I, I was able to do the changes he wanted on others I just but his he jumped body so frequently the up down process was I, modifying his personality would have been was easy at first give me more station I just wasn't aware that it was going to be this have these massive side effects I think and he he stands up he, or he bolts upright uh, throws himself around you in a messy sobbing bear hug uh, stains the your medical tunic with his tears I think I've killed the imperior the imperator Please, release me. Oh. Sensing a, or sensing unwanted contact or physical contact, uh, the one of the holographic security agents comes out of the patient ward. And Director I'll Fulton. Not, it's, I'll nod. It's all right, but yeah, I don't want him touching me. <laughs> it, it nods, and Director Fomo if, lets go. And sniffs. The the Imperator was very. <clears throat> he straightens his tunic and attempts to regain some form of. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Composure. Composure. Thank you. In the early days of the Eternity Research Group, it was decided that when individuals of a certain temperament decided to utilize our services, slight tweaks could be made to their personality to make them more amenable to the current form of government. It was... It has led to a... a last... or a lasting stability in our um, great Imperium. And then I decided that if it could be used to improve the Imperator's standing with his people. Why Why not mine? Yes. I was only a second technician, third grade. But I had access to the memory engrams. It was easy, just, you know. The Imperator has always had outbursts of where he lacked patience and it wouldn't be long until he started favoring others to take over yes but I I poked too much and he starts bawling again just staring at <laughs> We don't. We don't keep backups. We we can't. It interferes with pro, with the download process. With the only version of the uh, Imperator's consciousness is in his head. We don't. 
the last or and the last time he downloaded it, which would of course be the last time he took this body. <sighs> Which director, can we adjust the component? I don't know. I don't know. I, I've tweaked too much for too long. Centuries of work. Must have overlooked a variable, or the sequences just merged poorly. Do you have this trance, this... A rejuvenation ability on your ship. No, no, no. The ERG is performs all of its services on the planet of Vax, and three of its license, three of its licensed facilities throughout the Imperium's territory. Our technology is incredibly private, proprietary. Son, certainly. are efficient in this process? We've had years of... We have had centuries of practice, sir. Doctor. You are efficient in this process? Yes, I've overseen it done thousands of times. The direct... Once the Imperator was compelled to <sighs> favor me, I became his personal overseer of his consciousness. And he takes great pride in that fact, despite the fact that he's a two-timing little twit. Well, it seems that your assistance may be required. He wrings his hands nervously. Oh, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. And it's at this point that we head up to operations. Actually, no, let's go to the security office. All right. The security office, which is taking forever to load. There we go. Uh, Demos, what is it that you wish to be doing during this time? Are you st just overseeing things from the security office, or are you out and about doing other things? I'd be out and about doing other things. Ah, um, okay. Where would, yeah. where would Demos be? Probably... Heading down to um, engineering as well, just to see what's going on. Okay. So down in the reactor room. Uh, Would the turbo lift be working, or is he like going through Jeffrey's tube? Uh, there is one turbo lift that is that is operational and limited to essential personnel only. Which okay. would have been which Keevan realizes approximately ten stories of his hike. <laughs> because I think that's hilarious. Let me see what's going on here. Um, sorry, one second. I've just realized one of my set pieces is in the wrong place. Let me leave. Okay. So you find... Uh, you are down in the refinery. It is... Nope, not the refinery. The reactor. It's a very quiet operation down here. Uh, the heart of the station, which normally thrums with power, is eerily silent, aside from individuals barking orders, most notably that of the newly promoted second, nearly decided upon, second in command, uh, specialist, Je or chief specialist, Jeronia. I believe he's a chief petty officer. Chief petty officer, my apologies. I need to update your token appropriately. Okay. Uh, so, Slayer. The Slayer is here. Nia is down there. And engineers are running to and fro, trying to figure out precisely what's going on. Uh, Mr. Nia, if you could, if I could please ask you to roll a insight engineering test, please. Difficulty of two. Mm. Uh, to see why things might not be going so well. And if you have power systems or troubleshooting or stuff like that, that would be a good focus. Okay. Um, I'll take a momentum to get a third die. All right. And... <clears throat> 
And that would be three successes. Nice. So that is one momentum back. So it's very easy for you to figure out why the reactors have failed. Literally, the uranium raw, the uranium, I think it's 235 rods that uh, power the darn, th that act as fuel for the darn things, have all literally dissolved. They have completely disintegrated into their uh, base components and are no longer a viable fuel source for the re reactor. You attempt to uh, feed more. You attempt to grab a fresh box of the of the uranium fuel, only to notice that it too is or dissolves the second it's inserted into the reactor. A loud stomping up above indicates the arrival of Demos and a few security officers for good measure. Great, that's what we need. I walk in tin can in the middle of the dark. I Lovely, the teller right here. <laughs> yes, and he's been talking like that since this has been going on. It's great. Well, do you have ideas? Um, well, if you wouldn't mind coming over here, just... Wait, can you see in the dark, Lieutenant? I'm not sure how Exo's... Never mind. Um... You just see it... two glowing blue lights just <laughs> kind of dim, and then just... Okay, yeah, yeah. Minus zips out, engaging flashlight mode. <laughs> That's actually... Does the light actually protrude from Midas now? Yes, yes it does. That's actually kind of helpful. Um, so... No matter how much uranium-235 we put in this, uh, it just dissolves. My theory, personally, would be somehow the reactor is drawing so much power that we just burn through the materials we use to power it no matter what. Or maybe the heat source is just really high, but whatever's going on here is drawing a lot of power from the reactor to it. One of the two things. Interesting. And now, if I could please ask... So, um, what... Yeah, so something explodes, which is quite inconvenient because A, this is engineering, and B, everything is powered down, so there should be no explosions. One of the consoles to um, Specialist Zach's left... Uh, begins emitting a bright light, and if Specialist Zach could please roll me a uh, fitness plus security test, please. Difficulty of two. And we'll get his character sheet up. Uh, who's got special sack? That's a teller, right? Yeah, I'm assuming Gate Jumper has it. Uh, Gate Jumper, you rolling? Oh, yes. there it is. Okay. Sorry, you just. Oh man, ah. you just. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! You made him give him a determination. <laughs> oh, technically that is true. He is. He is he activated. Act he's always re He is always activated. Uh... <laughs> Uh, Special Zach, you're, you clutch your eyes as a, they are blinded, and you are deafened by the explosion. Uh, Demos, you recognize this sort of thing almost immediately as a flashbang. As this individual, out of nowhere from up above, uh, decamouflages and lunges down at Special Zach. Ooh... I'm going to have to say no to that. Mm-hmm. Do you have a quick to action? Because otherwise I've, I've spent threat, so it goes first. 
Mm, I could do two momentum to go first. Hmm. If you like. Yep. Okay. Doing that. And just because uh, I haven't had a chance to use this one yet, uh, I'm reaching for my side and mm -hmm. I'm pulling out Thorn. Ah, that's the. That's gonna hurt. That's the pistol, correct? That's the one with the dot, yes. Okay. <laughs> and yeah, I'm going to attack him with it. Go for it. Uh, it's, that is con no, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's control security, control right? Control security. Um, and I'm going to spend some threat to increase the difficulty to three. Uh, so three successes. And a complication okay. range of 18 to 20. All right. Uh, and I'll buy one more momentum for an extra dice. Sure thing. And I will give you, you know, just because I feel like I want to keep momentum, I'm going to give you two threat for an extra dice. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh oof, my oof. God. wow oh. you know what i'm just gonna determine that i'm just gonna use a determination okay uh do i use a determination no i have one milestone left i'm just gonna use my milestone <laughs> ah and the milestone co cancels both threat or both complications um, no, well, milestones It'll... can be used as a determination. Ah, yes, yeah. they can. That's right. Okay, so... And that allows um, you to re-roll those three. Yeah. There. And that's go. four successes. Okay. Uh, so one momentum comes back. Roll me some challenge dice, please. And what are this okay. particular weapon's effects? Deadly, persistent, one damage. Ah, so deadly. That means I get a threat by you t using it. Yeah, because I'm interpreting that lunge as a hostile act. I mean, you're not yeah. wrong. It kind of <laughs> is. A, a lethal, like, you know, like going mm -hmm. for a kill type thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, at this point, mm -hmm. none of you have gotten any briefing yet, to my understanding. We kind of can't. Communication's yeah. gone. Well, I'm assuming sh you each could have like some sort of short term or short range walkie talkies those are still a thing uh so that is five uh what do the effects give uh let's see so it now takes uh it's persistent one hmm. um so it just takes one damage uh, okay. every turn okay and if i shoot again it goes to two it just gains an additional damage per uh turn oh scary okay yeah uh, if you've so, never played Destiny, Thorn is radiation damage. Ah, I've never played it, so thanks. Cool. So, uh, Specialist Zach, you'd hear none of this because you're deafened. What you do hear is a, is a shriek of tinnitus. Uh, what Jaren sees, on the other hand, is a console apparently exploding, Specialist Zach screaming in pain, a long lizard type creature jumping down from the one of the conduits up above lieutenant demos gay saying no bitch with a pistol a splat of uh thick green blood and let me roll some dice here i will spend some th i will spend threat Ah, yeah, there's... And it maintains concentration long enough to slip away back into camouflage mode and... But it is... You have wounded it. I have heightened senses. Yeah. Do you now? I do. I have sensor implants. As uh, a talent. Uh, what senses? Sight? Sound? Uh, it is sight. Sight. That's not going to help here, I'm afraid. No? Can't nope. even see uh, pressure differences? Okay, that's... Yeah, fair enough. You have, you've taken the talent, I may as well let you have it. So, uh, you do see it, or at least traces of it. Um, it's similar to, like, um, uh, infrared, except, you know, 
Uh, you see where its feet are going. Uh, it seems to be making some fairly long leaps as it attempts to make its way up towards one of the access con one of the access conduits up. Um, so it would be my turn again. Uh, yes, um, correct. Uh, would I have enough distance to like barrel charge it? Uh, considering that it is up among the rafters at this point, okay, I don't think fair. you're able to do that. Right, let's go take another pot shot at it then. Okay. And because it is acting as if it has a cloaking device, that will be a difficulty three shot naturally. And because I have threat, I'm going to increase the complication range again, 18 to 20. Uh, you guys are going to love me. Um, for the beans, you get all threat for five dice. Ooh, okay. <laughs> I'm not hearing objections. No one's saying anything, so I'm just like, okay, for nope. the beans. No, if you want to give me threat, that's cool. Don't we have two momentum? Yeah, but he, yeah. he wants three dice. And I want threat, yeah. so I'm not going to, you know, complain. Oh, jeez. What's <laughs> <laughs> going what? on? Oh, I'm not the one rolling, and this is my type of roll, everybody. <laughs> How about uh, I'm rolling crits tonight, and everyone else is doing the other thing? <laughs> so, that is three successes, so you do hit, so roll damage. Okay. Um, okay, and now it gets another stacking effect, so it now goes from one damage per turn to two damage. Two. Okay, cool. And it's maxed out there, it can't get any more, so if I hit it right. again, it's still only two. Uh, how much stress does this thing have? Cool. So, uh, things happen. So first of all, your, uh, because you rolled two complications, uh, the first is, th is that Thorn, um, bleh, uh, you pull the trigger... The gun shoots, but sadly, uh, Thorn detects a weapon malfunction and immediately transmats back home. That's okay. Yeah. So you obviously can't use that particular weapon for the foreseeable well, future. But I it's can't done use its any job. of them until the next adventure. Yeah. But the real weapons are my fists. Naturally. The second complication is that the... Uh, what he was hiding behind happened to be one of the plasma conduits, uh, which is now spewing pla... Uh, so, Mr. Nia, not only do you have a dead reactor, uh, you have a dead... Uh, you have a dead plasma... Or you have a leaky plasma conduit, which is one of the very few safety things keeping the... Well, sorry, this is a station. It doesn't have an antimatter chamber. Bummer. Oh, well, which is now um, <laughs> spewing hazardous plasma all throughout the uh, throughout the engineering area causing... I thought we still had a warp core... Beards on fire! Energy <laughs> producing. Not for stations. Stations appear... To, based on what I've been able to find out is that stations are primarily powered by nuclear reactors. Oh. I figured the station would have a warp core. No real need for it because, you know, the station's not going anywhere. True, but the warp core produces much more energy than nuclear reaction. Yeah, but it, stations don't need the... Well, what warp cores are really good at are generating the sudden burst of energy needed to enter the warp field. Like, to actually jump to warp, mm, okay. warp factor, whatever. The stations require a lot of power, but it doesn't need the sudden jolt of energy that the antimatter-matter uh, reactor gives. Okay. Yep. Carry on. No, but that's a good, that's a good questioning of my lore abilities. Um, <laughs> so yeah, uh, Jaron. Uh, any tasks yeah. done down in the engineering area, re at least until uh, the it's all cleaned up, will, will increase by two difficulty. Fun. Uh, and special Zach, your beard's on fire. Not the beard. <laughs> no, not me, beard. No. I'm blind, deaf, and slipping me. in acid. <laughs> he just has his chis chiseled jaw <laughs> underneath the beard. 
Meanwhile, um, why is it always with the tin can? Uh, Demos, uh, you're mm -hmm. you're not paying much attention to this because you now see a slumped over lizard form dangling from uh, dangling from some pipes, uh, like a pair of shoes tied together at a sh uh, by the shoelace and slung over a power line. Just look to me, I'm like, do we need to evacuate? Um, probably the smart plan, I can try to patch up this plasma console, but I don't think that we have the time, uh, But and I think we have more pressing issues at the moment. Then evacuate. We'll lock down this area until afterwards. On it. Specialist, we're leaving. Um, do I know if that thing is dead? Like, is it breathing? Is it, or is it just dead? It, uh, from your current advantage point, you don't see that it's showing any signs of life. Uh, I just let it aside as I let everyone out first, and then I'm going to try and grab it. All right. It takes a little bit of time. Anyone who is not busy trying to save their health and well-being would kind of laugh at seeing uh, Demos weighing, what would you be, approximately half a ton? Trying yeah, to, somewhere around there. Trying to jump and reaching up. Event eventually, through a prodding stick, you're able to <laughs> loose to uh, unslip it from the pipework, and it falls with a sound of wet, po uh, of a sack of potatoes. I'm like the janitor in a gym coming to the school with a long stick to poke the basketball out that got wedged between the backboard and the hoop. Yep, <laughs> like, basically. And that is your... So that is what you've been up to recently. Let's... Yeah. Um, I'll so... just say I had to stick me with it once I grab it. I figure that would be your next destination. Next up, we are going to cut yeah. to operations. <laughs> where... Um, at this point, uh, Commander Keevan has made his way through the emergency turbo lift and back on station, back to his station. Uh, you, uh, Commander Keevan, you realize pretty much the same thing that Nia did, is that there is zero fuel in any of the reactors, and the reactors have all had to shut down or um, go nuclear. Or however it is nuclear reactors work. I'm not a nuclear physicist. I tried looking up a little bit and got quite confused by it all. Nuclear. Yep. And just because I know someone's going to say it, I will say it first. Nuclear vessels. But now, now that's that's been said, <laughs> moving on. I'm assuming right. that the captain and I come out from the ready room. <laughs> yeah, at this point... Uh, what do you do with uh, the Adrak? Ah, what do you do with Adrak Charmal and your guest? Charmal can be with us. The guest is staying zip tied to the chair. Okay. Adrak Charmal is busy shouting orders into a handheld communicator. I just turn to the captain and go. I'm glad his is working, but we really need to get ours online. Yup. That sounds like a good engineering task for Mr. Keevan. Yeah, I was, I was about to chime up and just like, let me see what I can do with that, Captain Commander. All right. I just uh, look over the, the side railing. Glad to see you're up here. What is happening? That is what I'm trying to figure out. Figure it out faster. We're being hunted. Hunted. Okay, and Keevan starts tearing in to try to figure out um, one to get communications and two to re try to figure out from up here what. Okay. Uh, so first things first is communications. So if you could please roll me a um, control plus engineering, please. 
and the station is not in any position to assist yet. So this is going to be difficulty two. Could I come down and assist? Yeah, you're more than welcome to try. So, sure. Don't. You or any number of the individuals on the bridge right now. Yeah, I like the idea of Dolrum coming down. He strikes me as the hands-on guy, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, troubleshooting for a focus? Troubleshooting would definitely be a good focus. And you know what I'm going to realize finally after my last one? Oh. I am going to pull out my engineering tricorder to help me out because that will remove the difficulty down to by one. Oh, yes. Engineering tricorders. I'm glad someone's reading the gear sheet because I certainly don't. So, cool. All right. What, I'm r rolling control engineering as control well. Control engineering, yes, please. Could I make an argument for either pro Starbase Protocol or tac uh, combat training? Because reestablishing communication yeah. would be one of the first primary things in combat training. Yep, Starbase Protocol. Sounds like a good one to me. Eh, well, it was worth a shot. I mean, a valiant effort, to be sure. And Mr. Keevan, how are you doing? Oh, there, my roll's already up there. I got oh, one success. I'm sorry, so... I got distracted. Yes, you got the one success that is required. Hmm. Uh, Commander Keevan, you have gotten enough replicators, or ah, by diverting power from life support systems, because, you know, there's enough air on this station, people are going to be perfectly fine for at least an hour, at least, if not more. Uh, you divert power to some replicators and are able to uh, command those replicators to produce some uh, short-range uh, uh, radio frequency walkie-talkies. Commander, Captain, we've got a few walkie-talkies here that we can use for now, but we need to get these to other people. Primitive. I should... My apologies. You activate them in several. You activate the replicators in several key areas of the station. Oh, that works so, too. So sick bay magically gets the walkie-talkie. The security office gets several. Um, the reactor room would have some if it weren't currently uh, showing massive amounts of a plasma leak, in addition to everything else that just happened. Um, promenade safety officials get uh, their office gets some. Basically, whoever needs a walkie-talkie can get access to a walkie-talkie in short order. Perfect. Now let's try to troubleshoot what else is going on with the station. Ah. Okay, this is going to be an insight engineering role. This is going to be a difficulty of two. Oh, just wait till you see all this. Uh -oh. All right. In insight engineering. Mm-hmm. Um, I am going to use my testing a theory talent plus one die for similar task. Okay, yeah, you've tried that before. It didn't work so well, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then using the apl applicable focus of troubleshoot. Okay. Are you adding a dice? Ooh, oh, yeah. That's four successes. That's nice. Uh, meanwhile, while I explain this, Captain Crawford, could you please roll me a fitness medicine test, please? Difficulty of oh. three. No. Uh, so what is going on, or what you're seeing here is a rapid dissolvement, or a rapid, that nah, rapid dissolution of the fuel that was within the reactors, and it appears, uh, going through all the station logs, um, of what's been going on, there was a brief alert of a, uh, chemical instability detected within the fuel system just before this all kicked off. Okay, so I need to look at... Did we get any momentum from Kivon's? Uh, yes, you get one momentum. Uh, one momentum? Did I, I say two? Um, how about three? Of course, right. Engineering tricorder. Yep, so three and momentum. And you did testing a theory to get your extra dice, so we didn't spend any. That's correct. Okay. So we're at five. So... Okay. Fitness medicine. Okay. Mm -hmm. We are at five momentum. Take mm -hmm. what you need. Um, 
Yeah, I'm just looking at because my fitness medicine, I'm looking at a solid 10. 50 50 um, chance. Awesome. Yeah. Diffic well, difficulty three. You can do this. I feel like this might be important. Um, so I'm going to get two extra dice. Okay. Oh yeah, I was thinking I was thinking about popping determination, but that's an option. Uh, what value would you have for that? Um, <laughs> both body and mind are important in leadership. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> the fifth, yeah, that would definitely work in this case. Okay. Yeah, but I'll. I'll definitely use two momentum to get one extra dice for this. Okay. Sure. I gave a, I gave us those back. Um. And I do not have a focus for whatever the hell this is. That's three successes. You got it. Yep. That's the three successes you need. Yay. Captain, you feel a, a prick at the tip, right at the base of your neck. Your hand goes to itch it like it would a bug bite. You pull out a small dart. Uh, you start feeling very feverish for a few seconds, but you're able to power through it. And the fever subsides relatively quickly, but it's not completely gone. I'm looking directly behind me. I'm looking around at different places to see if I can see anything that might be... Insights, the source of that, while also, oh, sorry. while also notifying uh, Dorum and, we'll say, Rif Rif oh wait, Rafati's probably in the... Yeah, Rafati's keeping track of your guest. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll notify Keevan, Dorum, and uh, Charmal about what just happened as I'm looking around. Okay, um, separate insight securities from anyone who wishes to attempt to find the source. Uh, what's the difficulty here? Uh, this is going to be opposed. Uh, let me Ooh. just roll here. <laughs> Oof, okay. Um, uh, you have... need to meet... Uh, you need three successes or more. Good, good. My um, security is yeah. decent, but not great. Security? That's science, not security. <clears throat> oh... I'm going to give you a threat for third day. Ooh, okay. Since that I sounds like fun. Um, combat training. Yep. Hidden or survival. Or, uh, or composure. Uh, honestly, <laughs> any of those sound good to me. Keevan's just going to... Oh, my Ooh, lord. Yes. There's uh, five successes, so that's uh, three moment. Uh, yeah. F bah. You need three, so that's two momentum for you. Uh, what's Keevan doing, if anything? Uh, Keevan was just going to try to still manage to fi try to figure out about this chemical issue uh, going on. Sure. So he, was, he wasn't he was worried about the security issue. It's like, oh, Captain's under attack, that's fine, there are better people for that than this. Than <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Commander. Good job. <laughs> okay, um... An analysis of the fuel without actually being at the fuel will increase the difficulty by one. Uh, that's still so that was going to leave it to be a base difficulty of three. Ah, uh, would that then also still be a troubleshooting issue? Um, no. This is going to be more chemical analysis. Okay, uh, so insight engineering or yep. insight science? Either or would work in this case. Which is exactly the same for me. Okay, then. Sort of particle physics, chemical sciences, anything like that would work well here. Yeah, that unfortunately <laughs> not. However, would we consider this again another testing a theory, similar task in engineering? Um, you're going down the same track, so I will allow it. Nice. Oh jeez. Okay. Um you know what I am I'm going to pop my determination of there's more than one solution to a problem. Okay. To reroll the one die. All right. And while you're doing that, uh Commander Dalrum, your keen reptilian senses are picking up a small 
a small way a small wavering or a the texture is just ever so slightly wrong uh, right above the uh, emergency turbo lift now actually my quick question is yes, this my apologies. Is, oh no um, you're fine um, is now popping my determination for the reroll is it just all of the dice or just one whatever you, you know can like re-roll any... as you can reroll as many as you'd like so if you want to try to reroll those successes and get criticals you're more than welcome to do so I mean most people just re-roll the uh, zeros but you know you yeah do you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just try to re-roll the zero. Okay. Nope, that's going to be a crapper. That's still nothing, I'm afraid, but at least it's not a critical. Um, Before yeah. 2019. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, that's not a... And I set the difficulty at three, I believe. So. Shit. I'm afraid without looking at the fuel itself, getting up close and personal, everything up here looks perfectly fine. Okay, well, uh -huh. Commander, Captain, I think I'm going to have to get down to the f reactors to see what's going on. I can't see anything from here. Hmm. Um, let's see. Because you're watching at Dolrum, I will make this an opposed test. Can you please roll me a fitness plus security test, please? Fitness plus security. All right. And that is three successes, so you need four successes. Okay, I'm going to do something uh, slightly unorthodox. I love it. I'm going to give you a single threat for one additional die, and then I'm going to buy a uh, second additional die with two momentum. Oh. Interesting way of moving things, but okay. Buying but one with threat your bold. gives me bold. Yes, <laughs> yes it does. <clears throat> and let's see what you do here. So, of course, your combat training or survival will kick in here. Well, Rerolling that okay. one. Yeah, reroll that zero. Okay, so that's a grand total six of success. six successes, which beats their four. It gives us three momentum, or uh, two momentum. Yeah, two momentum. What you. Oh. So. What call you, before. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Before, before we proceed too much further, I wanted to, I almost forgot to do my uh, challenge die roll for my veteran talent to oh, see if yes. I regain my determination. Ah, please re-roll that. Hey. hey, I believe that means oh, you I get it back. It. Yeah, I that do. Might be the first time that's actually ever happened on stream, so congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. <laughs> uh, a one in three chance, I believe, and it happens never. So, yay. <laughs> Yay, Vegas. Anyways, Dolrum, uh, you notice the blur of a most likely a chameleoid type species. Uh, it begins to make a sudden jerking movement towards the turbo lift door. I move to intercept. Okay. Uh, so, because you did move to intercept first, how are you intercepting? I just like the idea of me, like, jumping off the console and sliding right in front of the door before it has a chance to get it and grabbing it. Ah, okay. Uh, daring security, please. Okay. I'm just going to buy a third dice with momentum. I'm okay. tired. don't want to give you threat. Because um, I've gotten so many of them. I'm going to actually give threat to him. And give him one more dice to roll. Two so, successes? Yeah, that is two successes for him. You also uh, wait, what the heck? 30. Oh, I rolled the... <laughs> Oops. 40, 30. Uh, whoops, um, that's... I, I like the other one better. <laughs> so that is uh, three successes in total. Okay. Um, I'm assuming 
at this point, combat training is just going to keep yes. is kicking in nonstop. Yeah, this is combat training at this stage. Oh, for crying out loud! The oh. one time I don't activate bold. <laughs> um. Okay. Can you please roll me a fitness plus medicine test, please? Difficulty of three. Part of me also wants to re-roll that zero with a save milestone because I have like nine of them. Yeah. I mean. Just due to how we do that, I will I will allow one saved milestone per session. That's fine. Yeah, if you want to do that, you can. I'm if... going to do that. I'm going to use the the value. Sometimes you just have to hit things. Well, that is true. You do have to hit things. <clears throat> yeah, you need a critical success in this. Yep. Oh. There's a critical failure again. <laughs> Well then, the story just wants you this way. Wants it this way, uh, Mr. Dollarm. If you could please roll oh, me fitness apparently. plus medicine. Cool. Total of eleven. Mhm. Is it difficulty three? Difficulty three. Yes. I'm gonna spend a momentum for the third die. Okay. <clears throat> By chance, but survival. <laughs> you know, um. Sure, I'll let survival work. Nope. Okay, yeah, nope. Uh, so Mr. Dolrum, you take uh, six points of damage as you feel a claw rake its way th across your uh, uniform. Um, now, you did. You all. Yeah, but you all took body armor, so you do have resistance. I also have. Well, I guess I have stun resistance. I don't have. Claw resistance. Yeah, this is technically lethal damage. So, <clears throat> uh, so thanks to Demos's preparation, now you guys get the body armor. So you get, I think that's a resistance of two. Two. Yep. So that is only four points of damage. So you don't actually get the, in, you don't have to worry about the injury stuff. Uh, but you do begin feeling feverish, and unlike the captain who somehow managed to shake it off, it's starting to affect you quite heavily. Um, so until you get it looked at, you uh, you suffer a increased complication range, 18 to 20 for any uh, fitness related, so any um, daring, control, or fitness related tasks. Well, good thing presence is a power stat for me too. Yep. <clears throat> Um, you come to realize this just as the turbolift doors are kicked open, revealing a chasmus pit, and something makes its way out of ops. And just at this Good. point... Uh, sorry, do you have any one witty one-liners, uh, Mr. Dalrum? Before we no, change at this point, at this point, I'm imagining that I'm on the floor going, "Oh." Yep. Does anyone have anything they wish to do with Mr. Dalrum before we change scenes? Uh, I mean, we could try to see what's going on with him. That's about all I could. Yeah. <laughs> I can't do. Ah. <laughs> uh, anyways. Let's, um, we'll figure out how we get him to help soon. But right now, we're going back to the infirmary. Which currently sees uh, Mr. Fomo over the stern scrutiny of Mr. Sulkin in one of the uh, science, or the medical analysis labs. Director Fomo pr has produced an optical chip that contains uh, Japler, the final's last brain upload. He pulls it in and it is an extremely complicated piece of genetics, cybernetic coding, mathematics, um, so stuff like this that would literally require an individual who has studied their entire life in neural, neural theory to fully appreciate it. Uh, now that he's looking at his own code and is being kind of proud, his stature has shifted from one of 
embarrassment and shame to that of res um, resigned pride. Can we replace the chip inside his head? In this body. That would not fix the problem, Mr. S Dull, Mr. D ah, Mr. Doctor. Uh, the problem is, is that this what we're seeing is a continual de degradation of a program, Co copied back and forth and made tweaks on over centuries of work. He, Commander, we would have. He pauses. I could try to rebuild it, but it's not very good. Uh, at this moment, the door hisses open. Uh, Lieutenant Ashea, uh, the door to the uh, infirmary hisses open, and yet nothing seems to enter. Lieutenant Ashea casually draws her uh, phaser. And something bolts through, bolts through the force field as it begins to scamper its way back, as it begins to scamper its way through sick bay. Let's see how well it does against Mr. Awal Katok. Uh, can someone pick up his, uh, Mr. Katok's character sheet, please, and roll me a opposed daring uh, security? Uh, and this I is... Shall. Fantastic. This is a activation for him, because no one's actually activated him in a while, so feel free to activate him as request as required. Keep in mind, he does have a Batleth. I yep. kind of forgot he existed. Most people do. We all did. <laughs> Most people do. I mean, no one ever remembers the Klingon nurse. He also only has a security of two. Yeah. Oh, wow, that's four successes. Da -da. Oh, wow. I'm going to assume that doesn't actually do much. I don't think he can actually... Well, he could roll two 20s, but... Okay, so... I'm giving him roll a value. Yep. Okay. Uh, what's the value? Those who attack medical personnel are without honor. <laughs> that's a very good... Uh, that's a good one for, you know, Klingon doctor. Actually, yeah. Um, I'll take two momentum for a third die, because why not? Sure. Down to and one. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Let's see what happens. Okay, that you is got a... all four successes. He you got tie. four successes. So it's a tie, and it goes to the defender. So the defender gets to roll um, melee damage for a heavy my, blade. My question: uh, What's the base damage die for a batleth? Because I have no clue. I believe that is two. <laughs> it uh, so... is three with a vicious oh. one. Ah, my apologies. Ooh. So roll me. So I'm rolling five. Five, five challenge dice, please. With Vicious One, all the effects. Yep. Please. One of the effects. Um, that would be one effect. Yeah, so, so that's five. Let's hope this thing has no resistance. <laughs> you're in luck. It does not. Huzzah. So, uh, what you see very briefly, or what, or what Katok sees, is this. Very quickly. It, it takes a blade to the ah it takes a blade to the sternum leaks a bit of greenish blood hisses at mr katok and because i get to spend some th because you guys give me so much threat i'm going to use it no no let's be fair i gave you so much threat <laughs> well yeah but you gave me so much threat on behalf of the players so none of them objected so they're all really um <laughs> complacent it's able I think to it's overall fair. Yeah. It's able to uh, hide itself again. There's a small buzz as it pa as it passes through this force field and the doors hiss and the doors hiss open again and close as it vanish as it heads back onto the promenade. Oh, that's that's going to be fun, because I'm heading to sickbay with a body. Yes, yes it's you are. It's going to see me. <laughs> yes, yes you are. Um, so, uh, that happened. I don't even... One of the security guys 
or one of the holographic security personnel immediately materializes inside the data lab where Sulkin is. Doctor, there's been a security breach. It appears to have fled. I'd look at him. Thank you. You are welcome. Keep up. Please keep up guard. That is, I, that is within my acceptable programming. And it will literally walk through a closed door because it's a holographic thing. And will take position at one of the um, main entrances. Commander Keevan, if you are of value, use the walkie-talkie. Yes, <laughs> Commander you... Keevan, if you are available, uh, I need your assistance in Meslab. I'll be down there as soon as possible. Thank you, Commander. And no sooner are you done with that than the door opens again. Uh, because I find it funny. Um, Demos, as you walk through the door, you're surprised as a poorly aimed phaser blast hits the archway above you. Uh, you see a Lieutenant Ashea with a phaser and a, in a shaky grip. Uh, she drops it immediately once she realizes that, oh, it's you. <laughs> After this is all done, you're going to be attending the phaser training basic class on Sunday nights. That's an order. And I'm just going to drop the body on the floor. She lets out a small... Um, conceited. Yes, sir. Got um, a friend here? She... She just shouts, Doctors! And both Abbott... And Sulkin make their way out. Uh, Katak will go into the room where the Imperator is and sort of watch over him. Wise idea. Doctors? What? I have a nice it? little specimen for you. Well, I think it's the cause for our power out. It attacked one of the engineering crewmen, so I dealt with it. I see. I'll scan it to see if it's still alive. Okay. Insight Medicine, difficulty one. It has the ability to cloak itself, but not hide its thermal pattern on objects at touch. So I'm able to track them to a degree. I see. And definitely requires exobiology as a focus, or xenobiology, either. I suppose exobiology would be Lieutenant Demos's biology, in particular. Ha! <laughs> huh? Yeah. exo -biology. And he told me I couldn't have that, so... <laughs> uh, that's three successes. That is two more momentum, which is good, because I still have a lot of threat to spend, so cool. Actually, less I have now. more to give. Yes. <laughs> Uh, so, Dr. Sulkin, this thing is dead. Uh, looks like it has uh, suffered a severe loss of blood and a decent amount of radiation, or some um, ah, exotic particle radiation is was hampering with its uh, ability to regenerate or heal itself. The specimen seems to be deceased, Lieutenant. Uh, if you could, please set it in one of the empty rooms, and we will deal with that situation at a later time. I'm still trying to save the Imperator. Understood. And he's just going to look to a couple of this. He's just going to call the security programs over and get them to load it up. They do as they're programmed, which is follow your orders. They will cart the individual to one of the private uh, diagnostic bay which is at the far edge of the facility. I'll order one of them to, uh, the holograms to keep an eye on the door because I don't want anything to happen to it if it's, <sighs> even if it's dead. <laughs> Wise idea. Um, I'm going to walk out on the promenade. Mm -hmm. um, I'm guessing no one told me that there was one in sick bay. No one has volunteered that information, I believe. All right. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna head to uh, security. I'm picking up, uh, which is gonna be I'm gonna be using a momentum for this. Okay. 
uh, I'm picking up a Type 3 phaser rifle, and you get two threat from it, too. <laughs> okay. Um, so because he's done it, every one of you could access a Type 3 phaser rifle if you wish. And because it is probably one of the few things that Ember did that you have not overridden, um, instead of... Th this station does not equipped with Type 3 phaser rifles. Instead, it's equipped with compression rifles, which are not subject to such annoying things such as power dampening fields uh same stats excellent. and whatnot but you know it's a flavor thing yeah okay excellent <clears throat> i will make a note of that um i forgot ember did that do i see anything around sorry one second i am just about to let out a massive cough so please role play amongst yourselves for a few seconds while i mute Dr. Abbott, if you join me in the uh, lab, <coughs> following. <coughs> you're going great, so <coughs> Abbott will come into the lab with sulkiness. <coughs> I said, I'm waiting for the uh, Commander Keevan to take a look at the technical stats of this. As he's just heading down there, humming a happy tune. <coughs> Uh, as Dolrum is laying on his side, like, in pain. I like to think that just because... I think that <laughs> Keevan is bringing the commander with him. I think that would make the most sense, right? Sure. Probably. Cap and the captain's coming with, because the captain's not leaving Dolrum's side. Oh, yes. And, okay. I, and I, I like to picture in my head that... Uh, the Tellarite is still just bumbling around in there and blind and <laughs> deaf Blue. and burning. <laughs> Little wisps of smoke still, still coming up. So I, I think right now the infirmary is going to get a bit noisy. Uh, let's <laughs> see. So we have Keevan, Crawford, and Dolrum. Uh, you all show up. Uh, Demos is currently outside. And no sooner do you guys enter than so does Specialist Zot, or Zok, Complaining about his beard. <laughs> Dr. Sulkin, what the hell are you going to do here? Commander Keevan, with me. Ah, logical. Just Dr. Ab Dr. Abbott, take a look at the uh, Commander Dorum. Ah, yes, sir. Commander. Don't play with <laughs> Commander, this way. Playing with yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Commander, this way. Hop on the bio bed. <laughs> Upon seeing everyone go into sick bay or noticing, oh, I'll go on over too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's not like we're we're painting a perfect target where all of the high profile people are in the entire station. <laughs> right. Oh, well, I guess the captain hasn't seen this, but when Demos walks in, he is not in like the standard Starfleet armor. He is in the Exo armor. Yep. Which is big and padded and bulky. Neat. Just walks in and looks around, holding a Type 3, and is like, Miss a party? <laughs> Dolrum from the other room, No, protect the captain! <laughs> okay, captain, you're in an open area with a door that we can't see out of. You should move into another room. Uh, at this point, uh, Demos, one of your sec the holographic security officers, informs you of the recent breach in security and informs you that they appear to be able to pass through force fields. Very good. Get into one of the rooms, seal the doors. This one would be the easiest to seal off. Yeah, I was thinking that too. <laughs> Alright, um, I didn't see the ping, so oh, you're over there. Cool. Um, I'll okay. say, for safety's sake, because... Yeah, Crawford's going to have a compression rifle. Why not? <laughs> Just in case things happen. <laughs> I you know, love Abbott's going to do some um, scans on Dolorum to see if he, that she can isolate what's causing it. Okay. Uh, insight medicine. Uh, if you have toxicology, poisons. I have uh, vi virology and I have botany. I'll let virology... Uh, virolo I'll let that one, the V1, work. <laughs> I'm like, well, botany could probably work, too, if it's a plant poison. Yeah, it could be. Just find uh, out if it's plant poison first. Insight medicine. Insight medicine. Difficulty of two, I believe. 
believe. Yes, two. Would quick study come into play here? Yes, it would. Uh, would actually, no, it wouldn't. <laughs> no, I didn't take that into account when setting difficulty, so no. Oh. Well, it was diff we'll say it's difficulty three, and it's now down to two. Okay, fine. That's a good compromise. <laughs> um, momentum for a third die. <clears throat> All right. Because cautious medicine and doctors <laughs> are momentum builders. Well, there's a critical. Okay. Cautious medicine to reroll oh. that complication. <laughs> um, I, I will say, GM, mm -hmm. Demos does not have the rifle at the ready. It's on his back, and he's just big two, big two fists. He just wants to hit something. I get it. Oh, yes. So that's the momentum that we get from that. That is right. Uh, what you on? So what you're seeing is actually a fairly simple, uh, yet robust organic uh, compound that could really be synthesized. Could really be created from venoms uh, created from any number of plant life found on any number of worlds. Thankfully, it is a fair because it is a fairly simple poison. It's fairly simple to replicate a. Um, antidote. So, one one hypospray hiss later, and Mr. Dalrum is no longer poisoned. Yahoo! <clears throat> He's just four stressed down. Mm -hmm. Doctor, heal thyself. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, Mr. Keevan, uh, this is a... F uh, so, Director Fomo... The short, rotund individual is attempting to walk you through some coding that is meticulous, complicated. Um, do you have artificial intelligence or anything along the sort for your focuses? No, unfortunately not, unless we... If I'm trying to reconstruct this chip, I mean, all I've got is reverse engineer. Well, the chip is in perfect order. Um... So it's not that that he's trying to fix. He's trying to basically undo several hundred years of int of uh, coding tweaks. And as anyone who has programmed knows, that is not a very straightforward prospect. So 200 years of f copying a copy of a copy of a copy of another copy. Oh no, it's worse than that. It's making a copy, tweaking a couple things letting that copy for you know 50 years then making some more tweaks letting that change self corrupt over years and yeah <laughs> no goody yeah um roll me an insight engineering test difficulty of two please <clears throat> my apologies Oh, uh, let's just... Uh, I'm going to burn a momentum to add a dot. Okay. <clears throat> that would oh, my be... Lord. That's four successes. So two momentum. That brings you up to five. Uh, Keevan, you're looking through this. You're sort of catching bits and pieces of it, but you're you realize that you're out of your depth. Um, thankfully, there is a, one individual on this station that happens to be an artificial intelligence expert, and his tank is probably getting cold right about now. So he's probably already in his Enviro suit. A loon. <clears throat> Uh, and let's see, Mayloon. Well, the AI core might have gotten uh, walkie-talkie. <clears throat> well, it might, it might, it might not. But his suit radio probably works cause if he's in one. Wait, keep into Mayloon. <laughs> this is Mayloon. Hello, hello, Commander. Are you going to be turning the station back on anytime soon? Hopefully very soon, but I actually need your assistance with something else. I have a 
severe AI programming issue in MedBay that I need to, we need to get repaired as soon as possible. That is most inconvenient. I don't understand why Rami's artificial intelligence is in sick bay. Is she sick? It's not Rami. It is a secondary. It, it's with a dignitary that's in the med bay right now that we're going to need the assistance. Oh, is this what all the fuss is about? Apparently, I'm going Irish. I don't want to be. <clears throat> <laughs> this, ah, ah, an excuse to stretch my legs, so to speak. I'm looking forward to it. I will be down there as soon as I'm able. Excellent. Thank you. Dr. Sulkin, I have somebody in mind. Mayloon uh, May will be here shortly. Mayloon knows Rami's AI, so that might be able to help with our situation here. I see. Any assistance would be appreciated. Well, with any, if, with any luck, Mayloon should be able to get the Imperator's chip fixed as best as hopefully back to normal. <laughs> okay. Uh, at this point, let's see. How do I want to run this? Um, Lieutenant Demos, if you could please roll me a... Yes, roll me fitness secu... Uh, let's roll an opposed fitness security test, please. Okay. Uh, security. Um, you are currently the defender, so. <clears throat> if it's anything biological, it's not going to affect them. It's definitely not biological. Okay. <clears throat> uh, is this like me defending myself against an attack? Uh, yes, it will be. And that is four successes that you will need to meet or beat. Okay. <clears throat> um, would my hand-to-hand -hand come into play? Um, yes, I will let... Yes, it will. Okay. <clears throat> and just because uh, Demos is in a very fighty mood, mm -hmm. enjoy the threat, GM. Okay. Five. Nice. Shiny. <clears throat> so that is not enough, I'm afraid. Um, um trying to something here. I still do have my normal determination. You still do, yes. Yep. Gonna use it. No okay. one uh, will stand between me and those I am to protect. That's a good determination. <clears throat> well, there's we five successes. That beats it. Uh, Demos, you see it. Uh, the door opens, and something passes through the protective force field. But you're all re you're ready for it this time, knowing knowing that it's already done this trick once. It's not going to do it again on your watch. <clears throat> uh, at the very last second, you see some, <clears throat> sorry, uh, some sort of sphere, ah, some sort of palm-sized disc materialize out of thin air as it tries to make its way towards your chest, but you're able to grab, uh, grab at it and bat it aside so it bounces off to, bounces off underneath Lieutenant Ashea's desk. It goes off at the console. The console erupts in a series of sparks. Lieutenant Ashea screams and immediately darts back behind one of the door frame. Back behind the door frame. <clears throat> okay. Um, and now we're in combat again. So, since I'm defending against attack, do I get to make an attack then? Uh, that was more or less... Um, a range to action. Yeah, that was more or less how well you did against the initial strike, because she wasn't looking to actually attack you or deal damage. Oh, well then she's gonna lose. <laughs> Quite possible. So, <clears throat> uh, it's still currently an invisible opponent. 
So it is going to be an opposed daring plus security roll. Um, you'll have initiative since good guys go first. And she will get one automatic success because she is cloaked. Okay. Dolorum also has quick to action should it come into play. <clears throat> okay, so that is only uh, three successes. As uh, she's three the success. defender, oh, yeah, so two. you. Yeah, she is three. So she has. You need to. Uh, four or more to hit. All right, you guys okay if I use momentum to <clears throat> get four dice, or do you want me to uh, use threat? Hmm. Three momentum it is. And I'm just because you've given me so much, and we're nearing the climax. I think a I will increase the complication range, uh, eighteen to twenty. Okay. Uh, then we just see something here. Reader favoring me. Let's see what Zinch does. <clears throat> Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, yeah. Crap, we got a focus. Uh, that okay. is only the. Th that's only three successes, unless you're able to materialize something. Uh, that's not going to do the trick, I'm afraid. <clears throat> uh, did the sensory replacements give me anything extra like did it uh um, kind of see not in not in this case um it would help for tracking the foe but not f in the way of attempting to dodge active like you know try to hit it while it's ducking and weaving similar to you you're able okay. to yeah <clears throat> and believe me you have no idea how much threat i'm spending behind the scene to keep this happening i'm almost out if it's not for your constant injections, well. Hmm. <laughs> well, I did roll a 17, so yeah. what is the increase in challenge? 18 to 20. 18 to 20, Ooh. so, yeah. It was close, but... No cigar. Yeah. <clears throat> hmm. Well, it's Hearing still, the commotion, uh, can yeah. Dolrum peek out of his thing and be ready? Is Dr. Abbott going to let him out? That's the question. Because right now you're Dolrum? a patient. Dorum's a reptilian. I don't know that she'll have a choice. Good point. <clears throat> yeah, so, uh, Commander Dolrum, you are... You stride out, and... I like to think while all this is going on, Sulkin and Keevan are just sort of... <laughs> just in the back going, and if we do this, we do this. Could you please keep it down? Do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> I totally agree. We're <laughs> I am focused on my patient as this war is going on in my med bay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> Can you get down out there? <laughs> Can't use momentum to reroll, huh? Uh, not unless you spend determination, I don't think. <laughs> yes, perfect. <clears throat> okay. So. Well, the captain's a near shot. He could give me his determination. Uh, I suppose, yeah. I've already used my determination, sir. Oh. Yeah. He used it to not get sick. <clears throat> okay, so what is going to happen here? I think we're going to have to do this in combat. So let me get let me get all the right tokens in all the right places, and then we will start doing stuff. <clears throat> so, we so quick are... question: that was yes. her attack on, against me, right? And that was my defense action, essentially. Uh, the f initial thing, and then your the the role that you just did was mm -hmm. your uh, melee attack against her. Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, so, let's... And uh, I have quick to action. You do. So, I just need to get all the right tokens, because I am a bad GM. They're all over the bloody place. <laughs> uh, you know. Hey, a self-deprecating GM is a fun GM, right? Uh, let's see. That's the dead one. The dead one doesn't need to roll initiative, unless I want it to. And there is her token. It's back from the dead! Okay, there's that. There's that. <clears throat> really should pick up the assimilation uh, talent from my hands. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's get people added to initiative order who are taking part. 
uh, you, Dolrum, could talk if he wants to. Does anybody else want in on this? Um, I could add the security guys, but they're... I don't have tokens for them. We just have to roll under. Uh, let's see. Add to turn. Uh, they could also provide advantage. They could. Um... Let's see. Good talk is guarding the Imperior. Yeah. Me and Keevan are focused on this control or trying to figure out this. Mm-hmm. Um, um, I guess see. just in case... I'm going to say uh, Abbott, can you Crawford's going to get in on this mess. Here? Okay. Crawford's going to get in on this. Oh, my. Okay, this is going to get very interesting very quickly. Uh, Demos just went... <clears throat> so it is the invisible assailant's action. And I'm going to spend some threat to produce one the la one more of those devices as she attempts to try to stick you again. Me or Demos? Uh Demos. Oh. Uh so that's only one success you have to meet or beat. Mr. Demos, if you could roll unopposed fit, uh, fit that daring security. Daring security. Okay. And this so is, is, is she this in is melee? a proper. Yep, she's in melee. This is going to be a proper attack. So if you win, you get to deal damage. All right. Uh, mm -hmm. One momentum for a third dice. Okay. Ah. Wow. Okay. Seventeen, 17 18, eighteen, and nineteen. 19. No twenties though. No twenties. I should have. If only I had the foresight to spend more threat. Um, speaking of which, could you please roll me a, a fitness plus medicine test? Uh, this is going to be. Um, a... I can substitute medicine for engineering. Okay. Because uh, of my race. Yep. Uh, fitness plus engineering. Then, uh, this is going to be a difficulty of three. Okay. And you uh, already have some sort of idea what is being stuck on you. I will give you one threat. Okay. Just because I've heard the plight of the GM say, I'm almost out. <laughs> Maybe the GM's bluffing. No. <laughs> GM lie? Who knows? Let's get the let's get things focused a little better for the stream. There we go. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> that is the three successes you need. Uh, it arcs over your uh, skin, but it is apparently whatever it was designed to do your skin is impenetrable to it all it does is tickle so that was her turn uh good guys get to go next uh which i believe would be dolrum all right hearing the commotion and i'm in my head canon i'm thinking he's still recovering so like he's leaning up against the wall as he's trying to, to take a stance mm -hmm. he's gonna like come up here and try to fire at it Sure. Now I'm just going to make the token visible, but it is technically still cloaked until it. But I know damage. that it just was yep. near Demos. Demos. So what is it? An area effect. Ooh, if you want to do an area, that would work fine. An area effect to charge. Yep. Okay. And I will also give you a threat for a third guy. Sure. <clears throat> well, uh, we rolling that complication. You shot me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm like, I'm, I'm thinking like I have it. I'm putting it literally. I'm putting the phaser on your shoulder as I fire it. Or well, I got one success. Maybe under his armpit. Uh, you fire, but. Just due to how the combat actions are going, your phaser, or something grabs your, or something bats your phaser aside at the very last second. Well, it could be their um, annoying prehensile tail. Or it could be Zack still stumbling around blind. Oh yeah, I like that idea better. Zack is, <laughs> Zack runs into Dolrum. My oh, beard! Bloody hell! <laughs> what in the world? <laughs> And they all just come in the back of the room. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it.
love it, I love it, I love it. Okay. Okay, so, well, that's that. So, uh, Captain Crawford, do you wish to do I have, something? I have quick to action, so he oh. can do something. Yes, well, there's no other people to go, so... Oh, no, sorry, I haven't actually... Talk. No, she hasn't actually... No, no, she tried her attack. That failed. No other bad people in the initiative order, so... Yeah. That we know of. That you know of, true. Because there's still the one... There's the yellow one yes. that attacked the cops. Mm-hmm. Um... Oh, Tuesday's taking care of her. <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, he's uh, getting see. lobed. So, or Tuesday's I mean, getting lobed. So, <laughs> I mean, Tuesday, Tuesday is a Gordon. Do they have heat-seeking organs? I'm not gonna. Uh, that. <laughs> if you had the advantage, um, if you had the momentum for the advantage, I would give you something along that line. But alas, you don't have the momentum for the advantage. I was just uh, asking, is, I don't know whether Gorn would have those heat-seeking organs that pythons and stuff have or not. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Crawford is just going to... Oh, boy. Um, he is... Oh, man, my man. Uh, yeah, he's just going to stand in front of the door and just, like, keep that compression rifle up just okay. in case something decides to open it. Okay, uh, let's do that instead, because that's just cloak, not... Okay, so that's Crawford's turn. Um, those left actively participating, I believe, is Katok. Anything for you? Uh, no, Katok's just gonna stand in stand there. To, somebody, stand and be defensive. Somebody needs to protect the Imperator, so... All right, okay. It's not that he has bodyguards or anything. Well, the bodyguards don't look like they're in the best shape either. So, yeah, could be, could, could talk. Um, anyways. Uh, let's see, bad person goes first, I believe, this round. Unless someone wants to spend a momentum to retain the initiative. I think that's how that works. Never did fully read these combat rules. No, the full, in the first round, the players go first. In the second yeah. round, it's the, well, not necessarily the players go mm -hmm. first, but whoever goes first in the second round, the, set, the uh, people who didn't yeah. go first, go first. Okay. Hmm. Dalrum, could you please roll me an a? Mm. No, Demos is too big. She. I was gonna say I'm also on the floor with a Tellerite on top of me. Yeah. I mean that you oh, didn't teleport. keep you didn't keep the complication, so he more or less just bumped you and left you to be. If you like it, if it you'd kept the. On top of me. If you kept the uh, complication, he'd be on top of you. <laughs> Just don't teleport you. Noted. Anyways, um, yeah. As you know, what I have th some threat left, and I think this would be cool. So I'm going to spend a couple points of threat to give her an extra dice. I will oh, give. No. Uh, for her minor, she needs three successes to pull this off. If not, it's basically a free attack for Demos. No. Wow. Nope, she does not. Uh, Demos, you feel something attempt to slide under you. Uh, oh god, I just realized what words are going to come out of my mouth. Something is attempting to slide between your legs. Oh my. Um... <laughs> But my induction port's not there. Uh, however, you don't see it, so you get to make you base or it instead runs right into you, and you basically get a free unarmed attack. Okay, <clears throat> that is, I believe, a nice mean six. Uh, check that. Question if yes. That's uh. Five damage plus two effects. Um, I am going to say that she is knocked prone, because I, because I would have to spend threat to keep her up, and I just don't want to do that. I so, imagine how he knocked her down as he just choke slammed her. <laughs> well, she's <laughs> sort of sliding between it, so it's more like a kick of some sort or another. But yeah, 
a massive kick to its sternum. Um, and she, yeah, she lacks, or she loses the focus to maintain her active camouflage and is on the ground. But, uh, right. yep. So that's a decent crunch. And that's her turn. So. Oh, she's on the ground in yep. front of me. I'm going to put my knee on her chest and just pin okay. her down. Because okay. you said I'm, I'm about a ton. Yes, yes you do. Uh, still roll that. Technically, this is still an opposed melee, so. Sure. <clears throat> Uh, and you need to meet or or you need to get three successes. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take. I'm going to give. Uh, I'm going to use that one momentum mm -hmm. for a third dice. Okay. I'm going to give you two threat for a fourth. Ah. All right. Well, that's the that's the. F that's the f that's four successes, and that is what you yeah you bad 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 sorry, uh, that's one momentum to you. Uh. Uh, also, I'm going to trigger something fun. Okay. So, um, spark of creation. Oh, okay. Uh, remind me so what that does. It increases my complication range going forward for the, uh, for the rest of the scene mm -hmm. by two. So anything 18, 19 is a complication. I gain five challenge dice to roll, and for each result that is an effect, we gain a momentum. Oh, all right. Let's roll those dice and see what comes up. This has never worked, by the way. No, it hasn't. And oh now my. it's... <laughs> so that's we... force momentum for you. Yep. <clears throat> cool. You've just had to say, and this has never worked. So not only has Keevan uh, got his veterancy pulled off, your spark of creation has gone off. I think this is the <laughs> first time where these effects have both worked, folks. Server's history. Uh, hmm. From the flavor of it there, it's like that that electricity that was still going over his skin, mm -hmm. it just intensified as he utilized that to uh, get us that ability. <laughs> nice. Okay. So, uh, let's see. So that's your turn, Mr. Katok. Could you please roll me um, an opposed uh, daring security, please? Oh, good. And you know, I'm going to spend the last of my threat to re-roll. Well, that's uh, you need to you need two successes or more, Mr. Katok. Okay. Um. Hmm. I'll just take a momentum for third die. Okay. <clears throat> and I don't have a focus, so yeah. Huh. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. He missed the one by one. Yeah, he did. He Let's has the security guards, did doesn't he? Um, uh, my under. Um, yeah, he would. E. Um, what is it? What does that mean? <laughs> that means that the security guards would get to make an action when it's the good guy's turn if they wish. Yeah, they've got the two. The yeah. two Vizar security guys yeah. that are pretty beat up, and mm -hmm. but they can at least try to stop them. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, now I was doing this, which was that, and that's Secret. this. Ooh. Oh, okay, that's not a heck of a lot of damage, but it was huh. the damage he was aiming for. Oh. Mm -hmm. So, what happens next is... Ah. Stupid layers. Stupid shortcuts. There we go. 
this one. Uh, it bounds over Katok with the grace of a Chinese gymnast. I don't know why I went Chinese there, but okay. We're running with it. Uh, now we have the image of the prehentile tail smacking yeah. Katok across the face as it basically comes off over top. Yeah, it's a basically you got tail slapped. Um, so if this was Pokemon, your defense would fall, I believe. Yes. <laughs> tail whip. Yes. yes. Tail whip. Tail slap is a different move, I think. Anyways, yes, uh, it, it um, reaches around and grabs the Imperator's body and hisses. Uh, both of the uh, bodyguards immediately scramble for their weapons, stand up, and uh, assume a readied stance. Do we hear this in the hallway? I'm assuming Katok would let out some sort of surprised yelp. Oh, yeah. Oh, Dolrim will quick to his feet. There's still a third one! As he's running down the hallway towards Katok. Get off me, you damned Tellarite! Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> As the Tellarite's going, My eyes! Yes. <laughs> Actually, you could yell him as much as you want. He's still deaf. <laughs> oh, by now, by now, the effects of the flashbang have worn off. It's just oh, your singed fuck. beard is your singed pride. Ah. Uh, anyways, uh, this is where we're at. So, Dolrum, your minor move or your minor action is to move into the area where said thing is. What do you wish to do next? Taking stock of the situation. Uh, does the hunter have the um, Imperator, or is I, it just like standing over it? it he's currently... Uh, let's see. So it's current... Ah, he's currently got one arm wrap, wrapped around the Imperator's body, and another arm is reaching... The other arm has pulled a knife. I'm going to full-on kind of combat training. Come in, aim, fire. Cool. Uh, control security, please. Difficulty of three, because, you know, hostage. Right. Um, you know what? I, I'm going to give you a threat for a third die. Okay. And then I'm going to spend um two momentum for a fourth die. Okay. To get my bold. And I'm also going to activate my star cross, which I've never done since I've gotten it, and because I'm going to. Okay, and what does that do again? Before attempting a task and applying a focus, the character may choose to double their focus range. Oh, my. My security is a four, which means that makes my focus range an eight. Ho, ho. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> You can do it. That would now, be... Uh, no crits. <laughs> no crits, but that's still the um, difficulties still in... Three. Yeah. 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 Three. Yeah. Okay. Uh, roll okay. me challenge dice, please. Uh... Well... Um, yeah, that's a lot of effects. Oh my. Yes, that is. And what is the effect? What effects do you get from type two? Hmm. I don't know if there's... I think you have to charge it to get Yeah, it. we have to charge it and I didn't charge it. So that's just straight four damage. Um, I'm going to spend another momentum to reroll those three zeros. Okay. Because I want to down it. <laughs> yeah. So, six damage. Six damage. That is enough for it to... Uh, let's see, it's not cloaked, therefore it doesn't get the um, resistances. Uh, yeah, that's enough to stun it. <clears throat> it, it collapses, and the... Imperator's body just slumps back on the table. It lets out a loud snore. 
Um, are there any... Oh, you know what? I'm going to grab the um, reptilian, and I'm going to come and put it in this bio bed and activate the restraints. Cool. It is sufficient. Not really part of your action, but it's not really going to fight you. So, okay, it's out of combat. They are actually technically both out of combat. Because uh, I'm guessing Demos isn't letting up anytime soon. <laughs> no. And I just lean back to look at the captain, or at least call out to him, like, Captain, I've had enough of these Malacca snake aliens aboard this Malacca's damn station. <laughs> and because someone found a way to work that pun in, you get one free momentum. <laughs> See? The GM likes puns every now and then. Okay. And Crawford will just slowly, you know, kind of come out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, Captain Crawford, you see, uh, well, taking stock of things, you have one pinned reptile, you have another unconscious restrained reptile, and you have one dead one. You also have one restrained one that's still in your quarters. Um, ready room. Ready room, my apologies. It's getting late for me, too. So, uh, it's around this time that the door, op the door to sickbay opens a third time. But this time in walks a dolphin in an exosuit. <laughs> and I have a picture of that, but I wasn't actually expecting Meilun to get involved in this, so we don't I don't actually have the picture uploaded, but I will upload it to the next stream just for everyone's viewing pleasure. He's actually in the engineering <laughs> section. You can open up his character sheet and see it in all its glory. Oh, that was actually... Oh, I forgot. That was done there. My apologies. <laughs> His little arms. <laughs> well, that's for, you know, an aquatic environment, but he's not in an aquatic environment at the moment, so... Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> I have a much scarier mech suit for him. But anyways, he walks in. God. Well, this seems to be a lot of mess. Yes, but it's taken care of now. Okay. Meanwhile, while the phases are flashing, uh, reptiles are flying every which way, Dr. Sulkin and Mr. Keevan and Director Fomo are just... I think it's hilarious. Just They look out a window, creature goes flying, <laughs> Demos charges by, small electric shock, Demos goes the other way, you know. Standard day in the life of a Cerberus Station med bay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, now, if someone could please pick up Meilun's uh, sheet, please. Uh, activate him. I don't think he gets many activations. And this is going it to be... It doesn't look like he's been activated at all since we've had him. No, he's primarily just been a GM PC, just because, you know, GM wanted to play a freaking fish. So... <laughs> So someone feel free to activate him. He's been around long enough. Yeah, indeed. All right, so... What I'm going to do here, um, because it's getting late, and we have two plot... Well, one plot line to resolve immediately, and one plot line that could be a dangling thing for later on in the season. If uh, Mr. Keevan or Meilun could take a control plus... Could take the lead in a control engineering test... Um, and I will allow Keevan, Sulkin, and Director Fomo to, ass to assist with one die. And we're looking for a grand total of six successes here. All right. I'm going to bump Meiloon's control to an eight because it's only a seven. Okay. That sounds fair. Uh, so what does Director Fomo roll? Uh, Director Fomo does not assist unless one of you wished to. Uh, you know what? He is a. Screw it. Uh, he has. Oh, wait. You can't reroll because he is supporting. So sadly, Fomo does. Now, hang on. I'm doing the math. His engineering is five. His... No. He does succeed. Oh. Yeah. Beneath that pitiful exterior lies an extremely intelligent individual. So. Uh, Keevan, are you leading? My control engineering, or, sorry, um, the stat is, yeah, is it control engineering? Mm-hmm, yep. 
I'm, I'm rolling a 13 on that. Mayloon's a 12. Yeah, I think I'll take control. Because, well, but Mayloon has artificial intelligence, computer science as focuses. <clears throat> Good point, yeah. Mayloon would do better on that one. And, uh, Dr. Sulkin, if I could ask you to ro uh, roll an assist, please. Alright, let's have Mayloon oh, take your, the lead. There's your assistance, thank you. He will take a third, uh, momentum for a third. Cool. I'll support. And artificial intelligence counts as a focus. Okay, so that oh. is three, four successes so far. Five. <clears throat> Who else needs to assist? I believe that's everyone. Uh, let's see. Keevan's done. So Mayloon rolled. Sulkin, FOMO. Yeah, we were looking for six successes, and we oh. only get five. Okay, um, Can we succeed in my that? engineering? And my engineering tricorder would not help me help us out with. Um. Ooh. You are actually two, so the difficulty would be lower too, right? Uh, this... It's an technically it's an engineering task in a sick bay. Hmm. Um, and the advantage of said sick bay is currently keeping all the lights on and all the equipment running during said power outage. So, tell you what, I would think that the engineering tricorder would assist in this since, since lowering it to five. Nice. So, barely, but congratulations. Um, it will take several hours of work. Um, ba Director Fomo and Mei Loon basically need to recode uh, Imperator Jappler's uh, intelligence from scratch. Well, his attitude from scratch. It's going to be a very, very finicky thing, which could potentially be outlawed if you find the wrong um, director of Starfleet Science, or the director of Starfleet Sciences, but or director of Sciences and Ethics Division. But hey, you're out in the middle of nowhere. It will take several hours worth of work to keep the memories intact, but change the overall attitude. And this body is going to have to be rebuilt anyways. So Director Fomo just has says, looks up to uh, Dr. Sulkin and says, "If you wish to keep that body for, a, if you wish to keep the body f for dissection, or scientific research, you're more than welcome to do so. Or pff, give it to those creatures. I don't care. When we get back, we'll have to rebuild his body, and we have enough genetic templates for him." I see. Well, that affect anything in the long term well he looks to the three of he looks to the three of you he does sort of try to keep a distance from the fish but <laughs> the dolphin appears to be overly curious in what's going on and brings the snout ever ever closer over the uh, short into short Vitaris's shoulder <laughs> everyone is quite uncomfortable with this Anyways, uh, while that's going on, uh, Captain Crawford, Lieutenant Demos, etc. Yeah. Um, I feel like Crawford's gonna go uh, back up to Ops and check on our other Akashi friend. Okay. Well, the uh, verifier is still tied up. Uh, he has... Uh, and uh, Lieutenant Rafati says that aside from requesting a glass of water and fungal juice, uh, the the ca the captive has been quite cooperative and has been sharing some fascinating insights into Akashi society. Uh, he's mostly interested in talking about how Akashi justice system works, but Captain Crawford, I'm pretty sure you don't really care. I don't. I'm just going to... Walkins like remind me what your name was again I'm Verifier Cricked well Verifier Cricked you lose uh, he has a sharp intake of, of air before he regains composure that's so captain if that is the case, 
then I would like to politely request that I be set free to return and deliver judgment so that the hunt can begin anew elsewhere. I think you're going to be staying here because we need to try and learn some things and after all you did just attack me and some of the crew of my station. But I was... We are following our culture's laws. Surely one of your federations. What we understand of yours is that you are quite a respectful species when it comes to other species differences and the tongue flickers with each s sort of like he's taunting you I'm trying to remember something um has power been restored at this point nope still down everyone's been so busy with um the imperator uh the assault that you haven't actually examined or no one has examined the fuel source and to determine why. Gotcha. Hmm. I'm trying to number I'm trying to number certain focuses. Uh Shizno, does Demos have a focus in interrogation? Uh nope. I thought one I thought somebody here did for some reason. Um It's one of the security support characters. I think it's might be Rafati. Uh Maybe? might be I know he has investigation. Which is why oh, he was more of a uh, detective kind of character. Uh, it's Rainer. Ah, Mr. Rainer. Negotiations, yeah, persuasions. persuasions. Gotcha. A fist in the face can be very persuasive. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, I've got some questions for this individual. So, mm-hmm. um, we're gonna have them let's escort them down to oh god it's either the brig or med bay i'm not sure what probably the brig the brig for the time being okay lieutenant rafati escort this individual to the brig i want to ask them some questions before we send them on their way yes sir if you wouldn't mind keeping an eye on him while I fetch the proper transportation equipment. Uh, he leaves and quickly heads into the conference lounge, where in a supply closet he pulls out an anti-gravity sled. He comes back into your office, picks up the entire chair, and puts it on the sled. <laughs> this is this is a comical image in my head. I right? know, that's, that is why I decided to go with it that way. <laughs> You want to have a lizard on a chair on a sled on a station in the middle of a nebula. <laughs> There's, I'm sure someone could come up with a piece of poetry like that, but quite frankly, it's late. And this... Not now. Yeah. Okay, back into... Be in that. Uh, back to the security office. Um, QRS Security Center. There it is. Okay, just let me put all of the uh, proper tokens in their proper places. We have one Akashi here. Um, we have another Akashi over here. And here. I'm not sure why they're all of different sizes, but oh well. Midas is bobbing up and down, heading... Back and forth through the Isle of the Brig, just saying, one lizard, two lizard, three lizard, our lizard, one lizard, two lizard, three lizard, our lizards. And... Just watch Midas. <laughs> like, what are you doing? Stop taunting them. Yes, They've boss. already been embarrassed enough. <laughs> All right, we and have I, Demos. I'll, I'll walk to the one in pink when I say that. <laughs> it hisses. A spit of venom splatters across the um, force field, causing it to hum ever so slightly. Do you kiss your mother with that mouth? <laughs> uh, let's see. Minimize. We don't need those open. We need the captain, who I'm assuming is coming down for taunting purposes. 
<laughs> we're so Starfleet, we're taunting. <laughs> uh, oh, maintain professionalism, Michael. I can do this. Okay. And I'm assuming you wanted Rainer around. Anybody else wanting to do this? Um, I know it's getting late. Um, Sulkin, I, I know this is effective. I know that you sometimes have very early morning shifts, uh, Sulkin, so if you want to bow out now, I wouldn't blame you. Okay. Uh, so. Honestly, I almost feel like this might be a halfway decent stopping point because yeah. interrogation yeah. seems like a fun thing to begin with. It kind of does. It might play more into the uh, light episodes that will happen off off stream, but we can certainly do it then. I might record it and upload that part as a VOD. But we'll talk about that later. But So in the meantime, let's just wrap things up here. The situation mm -hmm. is stabilized. Um, uh, Keevan, you are you receive a chemical com or you receive a chemical formula from the uh, verifier that will negate whatever has been done to your fuel rods, so that once again station power will resume. Yay! And then we start putting in a request rate to Starfleet for additional uranium. Yes. Power needs of a station and all that stuff. So, um, unless anyone has anything else they wish to do uh, quickly and painlessly at this point in time? No? I'm not uh, hearing it. Uh, nope. Are we not doing anything inside nope. here? Uh, we're later. I think we're going to pick this up later, later as a light episode, <laughs> possibly. Oh. I know that you sometimes are late to those, but we'll fly by the seat of our pants at that because okay. it is we're we're past the four hour mark people yeah. are getting sleepy so that's it from us folks we will if for some reason this doesn't wrap up in uh, uh on stream there will definitely be a summary at the start of next stream so up until then thank you all for watching thank you players for playing and we will be back next week or in two weeks time Bye bye <laughs>